<laughs> Welcome back again to your weekend part two our game part two uh but no seriously welcome to missed opportunities where this portion of the lawful stupid cast plays through the campaign curse of strad we've had a fantastic time uh going through it so far and um ha glad to have you with us as we continue on with us tonight we have jade playing the wizard limus Sean playing the rogue Giswaldo. We have Kyle playing the druid Saurive. Elena playing the uh, paladin Claire. And Liz as the cleric Maris. Unfortunately, our dear friend Anime Panda is feeling under the weather tonight, so is unable to join us. But um, she will be back soon, I'm sure. We'll have her back in no time. But... In the meantime, we shall continue on. Last time, the group came to terms a bit with their decision to help uh, shift the political structure in Valaki. They watched as um, power was consolidated to the Voxter family and were in fact summoned to a meeting in which they handed over an artifact known as the Curse of Strahd to Lady Voxter learning afterwards that, uh, or the, not the Tome of Strahd, indeed. Um, we gave her the curse. <laughs> we gave, they, we, you guys handed over the campaign. Sorry. <laughs> Here, play this. Strahd. Play and this, you'll like it. Also learned um, that it was given then afterwards to Jaswaldo's arch nemesis, the Vistani Aragal. They also rescued the scion of the Valakovich family, young Victor. Um, stashed him away in the attic of the Blue Water Inn. Uh, thanks to some very clever trickery on the part of Gesualdo and others. And thinking about what to do next the group finds themselves awaking in the morning after having a bit of a girl's night by the way we should not fail to mention feeling a little um, hungover a little of <laughs> a little bit of a wine haze still lingers sort of just above your eyes that sort of ache and buzz you know that that, that accompanies the morning is there for you for some of you but um you know as you get out of bed, your bed head looks awesome. And uh, nonetheless, the morning comes and you guys awaken in I don't know the how blue she water does it. in. <laughs> now. What do you all do? Um. Uh, good morning. Early. Everyone sleep well. I'm sorry. Everyone sleep well. <laughs> Why are you yelling? <laughs> I yes. I'm just so chipper in the morning. It's awful. It's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Well enough. Um, I suspect we don't want to linger too long, given how much shit has hit the fan in the last twenty four hours. Well, is is everyone here? I'm assuming everyone is. Yeah. I, I do have a question. And it's... I suppose it's alright if the if the situation is uh, always in flux, as it were. But are we trying to oppose the power that is in this area? Or are we helping it? Because sometimes it I, seems like the, the, the line is a little blurred. By power in this area, are you referring to you, you, you know Wachter referring to. or no, the no, 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 larger? No. Oh, the okay. larger thing. Mm. Because um, I think it's quite clear now that Wachter and 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 the, that they are definitely in league with him. I mean, like, really in league. I've... I believe I've made my position clear on this before, but I'll reiterate. Well, you did, but I'm, then... But then you, uh, but then we we handed over the book, and it it seemed like 
the, the the fact that they wanted it really badly would have been a good reason for us not to give it to them. I think in that situation, it was more of a. <laughs> well, there was no good, there was no good we could solution to that situation. Um, sorry. Um, I... I don't know. Maybe we fucked that up. Maybe we did. I really well, don't know. Okay, well, maybe there's an opportunity to unfuck it. That, I mean, that's something I was wondering. Is there an opportunity to unfuck it up? What if we were to go back and... Do you think it's... Could we go back and take it at this oh, point? I imagine it's no longer there, but we could <laughs> potentially find... We, if we could get it before it gets back to the hands of Strad, maybe... Huh. Or we write it off as a loss and move on with a better understanding of what we do the next time we're confronted with such a situation. I understand we got something in return. Great. I feel like what we gave was of far greater value than what we ended up getting. And I don't know how familiar you are with dealing with incredibly ruthless people who have tremendous amounts of power, but... We're not going to win if we give away advantage. I think it's still not clear to me how much of an advantage we lost. And we don't know what they gained. That's that's really the only reason I was willing to part with it. Um, but it again, we don't know. And I I'll be honest, I my expertise is really more in the slightly less intelligent, slightly more monster-like uh, form of opponent, not so much the conniving and sort of politically ah. oriented <laughs> individuals. Um, so I, like I said, I, if I made an error in judgment there, I'm willing to own up to that. Fair enough. Everyone makes mistakes. And if that's what this was, no problem. It you wasn't just you, Claire. It was... I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was ultimately a group decision, but like, was it though? <laughs> well, I definitely in the moment was like, maybe we shouldn't fight these people. But in retrospect, I mean, I see what you mean. I had a good night's sleep about it. I don't know why everyone's still yelling, but I do understand what you're going. So is that hair, the, hair of the dog there. <laughs> it's the hair of the dog. <laughs> um, you yeah, have a bloody speaking, Maggie. You, do, you hear a. <laughs> A creaking sound outside, a heavy ish foot on wood, and another figure enters through. There's long gray hair coming from beneath the hood, and um, this human draws his hood back. You see a gnarled face, scraggly facial hair, and you hear, Ah, political manipulation. Ah, too early for such talk. I say. <laughs> is he green? Who the fuck? Yeah, who is this guy? <laughs> and he kind of walks up to your table and sits down. Oh, hi. Can we help you? Mm, spare a coin for a desperate old man. I immediately pull out my, my tiny coin purse and just like lay them out on the table randomly. I have I, five uh... gold, I think. Just Waldo pulls a dagger and has it ready under the table. Hmm. This one generous. This one prepared. <laughs> hmm. An interesting combination. What about the rest of you? I mean, if you're in need, yeah, what's, Maris. You, what's your name, sir? Hmm. Questions. Fine. Hmm. <laughs> Expected. And you, sir? He looks to the mage. <laughs> what about you? I miss. <laughs> he can't keep it together long enough to... <laughs> I've got this image of Yoda sitting in front of me and I'm just not... Like, I mean, we haven't even had coffee yet, really. <laughs> His little head's cocked. <laughs> I'll get back to you. What about you, miss? <laughs> Your hair looks fabulous. 
oh wow thanks i just slept on it and it what? Just came out this way Could... so what are we all talking Could about except for the mage who is silent uh just wait, wait. some little mishap in our it's fine it's like wait, so what's your deal yeah yeah at the moment we're talking about what the hell is your name <laughs> Good, turning the questions on me, giving away no information. That's better. That's better. That will keep you alive in Barovia. I fucking knew Good it. to I see you again, know friends. It. And he all sudden the image shifts, and you see in front of you the familiar form of the vampire hunter, Rudolf Anderson, uh, thank God, okay. adjusting a hat on his head as he does so. <laughs> this fucking the hat guy. Before? <laughs> you weren't That's... poor at all. Get that back. I have a question about what I'm seeing. So, <laughs> was he wearing the hat before as the old guy, or did he like pull the hat out of nowhere and then just like top it on his head? <laughs> or did it like appear? As a... No, it seems he wasn't. Yeah. He was wearing no hat before. Um, uh, and in fact, he the the um the guise of this old man has dropped revealing it clearly to be an illusion um he's okay, suddenly okay, okay, transformed okay. into a different uh person and then he removes what seems to be a like a small cap from his head and tucks it into his pocket ah nice That's and a neat before trick. you you will also see then um uh let's see i have a handout for you to see ooh, ooh. Um, his portrait. This is who you are seeing. If you can open that up, I also have a little one up here. Damn. Yeah. It's a well put together man. Yep. Well, he has a you. nice cloak. Uh, he has a, a cane wow. that he walks with. <clears throat> Look at him. Steel tipped boots and a book. So, the uh, situation in Falaki is. Uh, much different than uh, that with which, with which I left it. Uh, you have a bit of explaining to do. That's fair. Um, uh, would someone else like to take that? Or? What the hell has happened? Ah, well, you know, um, never been one for enjoying the status quo. That's the, I'd use that word right, right? Is that this quote? Yeah, yeah, that, okay, that's thank you. <laughs> so, something was about to happen. There had been nothing happening for a year or so, besides a festival every week and a little bit of misery here and there. Perhaps you've just exchanged one misery for another, but... Oh, I, definitely, that is exactly what has happened. But um, I'm concerned about the fact that... Uh, one worships, you know, while the other was ignorantly believing that his, that his uh, facade could keep the evil at bay. Perhaps the devil you know, for the devil you don't. Yeah, hard to say. Uh, however, I have done as much research as I am able, and, um, well, you had some questions, yes? about this place called the Amber Temple. Yes, um, and we actually received confirmation um, from another uh, acquaintance of its existence. Have you discovered now, more? That's an acquaintance knowing of the Amber Temple. Who would this be? Uh, a, one of the Dusk Elves that lives in the outskirts of town, a fellow by <clears> the name of Casimir. Yes, a Vestani camp, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, um, I have not heard of this, Casimir. The Dusk Elves are very sad people, though. I would be careful about trusting them. Any particular reason? They have been under the foot of him for centuries, and, well, when you, when you rise up against uh, such a thing and are put down so hard, you are not likely to do so, honestly, so soon. Perhaps not even in a lifetime. Even a lifetime as long as the elves. But that hmm. is neither here nor there. Be careful. Is all I say. 
but um, you should know me. I would have rather released my saber-toothed tiger on them. I think that would have been a better disruption to their plans. But... So I have what do I know? I've only been hunting these things for about 60 years or so of my life. But I leave it. I have a question. Um, you all have so many. Well, do you remember on. that? Do you remember the the book that we showed you before? The uh, the journal. Yes, the most valuable thing you have ever brought to me in discerning the <laughs> weaknesses of the vampires. Yes. So now Wait. that you know the weaknesses, did he actually see it? I don't think he the did. The journal? We didn't have the no. the journal in I our possession. I thought you had it the first time no. you came no. to him, or did you just turn around and go? No, because we... we went and did that Ah, uh, you are right. I'm getting confused. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the DM <laughs> too. Yes. Yeah. Um, never mind. I don't have any questions. <laughs> it could you something to drink? Maris, like, pulls over the pitcher that she has ordered. <laughs> Are, are yes, you, it's orange are you, juice. It's orange juice. <laughs> I'm beginning to get a clue into Maris's character here. <laughs> this is what I've put up with for the last three years. <laughs> anyway, could I offer you some orange juice? Some orange juice would be fine, thank you. Oh, great. Great, 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 great. Um, <laughs> if, if it'll help him sort of orient himself, I can offer sort of a brief rundown of what has happened since okay. his departure um just kind of hitting just basic like a b c these things happened this is what resulted from I, th I think you would remember he was here trying to spy on and discern the nature of the order of the feather which you guys now know of right. do you um, tell this information as well so to, as far as I remember personally, um, while we have a sort of burgeoning alliance with them, we don't really know terribly much more about them or their nature, um, as other than our sort of previous suspicions about them being were ravens. Um, does that track? Mm -hmm. to your yep. Okay. That, yeah. Um, so in that case, I'll um, just, you know, I'll, I'll note a sort of generalized friendliness with them um, as it becomes necessary in retelling what has happened. Um, I'll include the details of the fact that Victor is upstairs. Um, and the, the family's willingness to assist us with that. So he will ask in part of this conversation, do you, do you, um, um, relay the fact that the proprietors are indeed were ravens and part of a sort of group, secretive group? Uh, I wouldn't. No, I don't. Okay. All, all I note is our personal friendliness with them. Do you tell him that we had an amazing journal that we no longer have? No, not for the time being. <laughs> Are you scared? I feel a little bad about how we did that. And so I think Claire is just a little uncertain of how to parse all of this that has happened in the last 24 hours. <laughs> so um, Maris will definitely talk about how we messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's fair. So we had this thing. So we had this thing. <laughs> That's why she's sweetening him up with orange juice. Exactly, that's why. We're trying to, make, trying to get to know this guy. Donut? <laughs> yeah, would you like a donut? Um, so, should I give a play-by-play -play or can I just... Okay, so, well, okay. Um, Mr. I'm so sorry. Orange juice? But what is your name again? I'm sorry. Rudolph. Mr. Rudolph. Oh, I can just call you Rudolph? Uh, you are, I could. <laughs> yes. Okay, 
That's great. Fine. Well, that's so nice. Well, I'm Maris. It's nice to meet you. Would you like a refresher on your orange juice? What exactly is happening right now? Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah, I'm honest, I have a little no upset. Idea. Um, <clears throat> my friend, my wonderful friend Claire, tried to explain our situation, but she's feeling a little bit upset that we had a book that may or may not have had some sort of importance to the the big guy, the Strahd character that we've been fighting. Can anyone back me up? We gave it away. We we're uh -huh. trying to get it back. We don't know. Is it a big deal? Like that was a lit Maris. That was a tad <laughs> loud. So, just, 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 just a couple down. Not just a couple down. We, we found a book that uh, seemed to have been written with Strad's own hand uh, detailing his weaknesses. We made careful note of them, and we can give them to you. But in exchange for the life of the boy who is upstairs, and uh, a book that was uh, of importance to our wizard, and also because was a, a decent threat to our lives we were we were it became necessary to give it away and i think it is very likely it is now in the hands of those who work for strad so the question i have for you how important do you think it is that we now try to get it back versus saying ah well that was probably could have been handled better maybe we should move on to something else um um, first, the question, uh, the question, how long ago did you hand this over to uh, eight it was less than 20, It was less than 24 hours ago. So there has been time for a horse to gallop at full speed back and forth from Castle Ravenloft twice or so. Possibly. We Does were that... all either drunk or, or high, so we have no idea if that happened. Mine got whatever I, whoever I placed my trust in. Our orange juice. Okay. okay I'm I'm sorry. Well, I mean, keep in mind that we did recover the book. That's good. And yeah. we got rid of it, not for no reason, just not a very good reason. And... <laughs> It seemed like uh, it seemed to some of us that it was the right thing to do at the time. Fine. Well, you are still here. Uh, honestly, I don't know what to say about all of this, but there is um, there's still the fact that uh, well, you are still alive. You have lasted here. As far as I'm aware, uh, aside from myself and perhaps one or two others, you have lasted longer than most of the outsiders who have come through the mists. Well, thank you. So, I think we should get down to business, yeah? The Amber Temple. Mm-hmm. Everything I have learned about this place suggests it to be a place of immense power and great evil. There are writings about it. The people who existed on this land before the armies of the Sarovich family conquered it, worshipped some of these entities. There were battles fought about it. And there was, in fact, an order established here that um, the only purpose was to prevent against uh, some, uh, some something uh, with uh, malicious intent from finding this terrible power. They were knightly order, led by a legendary figure in, this, uh, in its time, at least, who... Um, lived many, many years as the head of the order. Uh, in fact, uh, many lifetimes of uh, uh, many human lifetimes, it would, would seem. Uh, there is certainly some type of magic and they called it, um, well, uh, the uh, Order of the his, Dragon. His name was, yes, Arjin Vost. That would make sense, Arjin Silver, yes. Mm -hmm. 
We have found another book. Yeah. We have a book about them. Uh, Maris has it, I think. Uh, yeah, I oh, do. Yes. I, yeah, I, I have it. Would you like to see it? You already know about it, but do you, do you want to see it? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, great. Maris rummages through her sack. Because it's a book. Ah. Interesting. On the order of the civil. Yes, this is corroborates what I've seen. Uh, indeed. Um, well, this is the entire purpose of this uh, this uh, order was to prevent, well, those who would malign it, those figures from entering the Amber Temple and taking this, these dark powers. They existed before the Sarovitches came here. It's an ancient power. Very old. And very incredibly powerful. dangerous, I would say. Make sure you are ultimately prepared before you go there, I would suggest. So warm clothing. I've also heard it's very cold on the way, yes. We need to go to the Abbey first. Ah, in Kresk. Mm. Yeah. Yes. I you have not been to Kresk before. They keep their gates shut. Um, they are not very welcoming to outsiders. So I have, well, experienced. Well, so we need to go there. Yeah. Um, we have two individuals, um, Irina, who's with us, um, and our friend upstairs. Um, no, no, Irina to... is at the church. I thought we brought her back. She no, she was at last night. I thought you stashed oh, that, her. That, 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 she had right. drinks yes. with you all yeah. last night. That's right. She had wine night. Yeah. Um, Why doesn't anybody take notes in this group? Uh, <laughs> 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 Are you Sean? Um, no, uh, we we have obligations to ensure their safety, um, and we believe that the Abbey at Cresc is the best place to do so. Um, we'd like to accomplish that before dragging ourselves into a, a place that is certain to get individuals like those killed. I find that very wise. I have also, well, there are some writings I have seen that, um, well, he looks to Irina. Do you know she has a very particular look? Yes. Do you know of what I speak? She is fair. Peculiar in a way. I mean, no offense, my lady, but this is not your... This is not the first time you have found yourself the object of the Lord's affection. And she kind of lowers her head and nods. What? I've also heard of this. Do you know of what I speak? No. Well, when, when we were brought here the first time, I know I at least saw a vision of a woman who looked very much like you, Irena. Um, I believe that was also the case for at least some of our companions here. Um, and when we found the Tome of Strahd, um, I recall there was a section that spoke of a woman named Tatiana. Um, the description of what she did in the Tome was remarkably like what I saw in my vision. Um, is this the individual that you're speaking of? As you say the name Tatiana, you see Irina shift a bit and kind of inhale and grab her shoulder. Um, sorry. And uh, Rudolf will say, no, that was not, um, I do not know any name of Tatiana. There was a beautiful woman in the village of Berez with flowing red hair. She was murdered. 
shortly before the town was destroyed. Which village? Berez. Wait, 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 wait. Is it the hair? Does... Does he just fall in love with whoever has long red hair? Hmm. That would be doubtful. How long ago did that murder take place? Perhaps a yeah, hundred, hundred fifty years ago. I found just the scraps of a journal about it. Yeah, I was scraping things together, as you asked. Yes, Barez, shortly before it fell, someone wrote to a uh, family member and um, here in Valaki, and they said that it was a tragic thing that they felt there was this woman who was being visited by evil spirits. And she was on her deathbed, and the, the burgomaster and the priest decided it was best to end her life before she be taken by evil to save her own soul. She was a bright spirit, beautiful, bold, long red hair, and provest, um, and uh, possessed of a vibrant, vibrant energy for life until, well, she was visited, apparently. And when she was destroyed by the townspeople, the uh, city was utterly destroyed. So by Strahd? Well, we don't know. Can Strahd make the river rise and uh, overcome the city and become a swamp? I don't know. But it is a... Well, you don't go there anymore. There are signposts pointing to it, but it is a ruin, so I'm told. I 100% want to check it out. <laughs> I don't have a problem. <laughs> well, no, it seems that it would definitely be a good idea, but we have several places that are pointing us in that direction now. By all means, I'm not pointing you in that direction. It's just, this is something I have found out. Um, That's interesting. This is all I think I have to report. And so I think I should probably be going now. Um, that's totally fair. Um, and like I said, we it seems that our first order of priority once we sort of get ourselves sorted here is to make our way to Kresk. Um, if we were to look for you again, where would we find you? I would not recommend it. You would not recommend looking for you again? That is correct. Do you have any information? Before you go, can our lizard play with your cat? Right. That also. Um, can I offer you more orange juice for the road? Maris, what is with the orange juice? I just, I'm just trying to be nice. She's you are a very strange group of people. <laughs> I, I wish to see the cat. I, I will give you these, and the, the gold is still... He points to the gold that's still sitting on the table. Um, Five gold. <laughs> that is... That is fine. I have to go feed him or make sure that he is fed. That he's being fed. If you would like to see it, by all means. One other thing. You said you would teach me how to remove curses. Ah. That I did. And he will pass over a um, uh, rolled up piece of paper. Thank you. At your own time. Thank you very much. So, does the group head outside? Because Maris definitely also wants to see the cat. I will see what I can do about finding us some horses. I, uh, I'll, I'll try I, just while I'm on horse. that endeavor. All right, so we need one, two, three, four. I guess somebody can ride Zarif. Maris will ride Zarif. <laughs> So you five have two horses. NPCs coming with yeah. you. So five, well, I so think, five so. horses. One, two, three, four. No, oh, six players. Six players, I, two I'm NPCs. Giant elk. I can take Giant two. elk. Five. Oh, yeah. Sorry, seven, Clifford the seven big seven red people. dog. <laughs> seven people. Seven people, but minus one because no, Sauri no, doesn't no, need seven, it. Seven and then minus two because two can go on the giant elk. Yeah, two can go on yeah. Sauri. So we need five horses. Four. We need four horses. 
shit. I don't know so, what's going on anymore. <laughs> um, Irina, Maris wants to check in with her because she noticed that she had like a reaction to the name Tatiana. So she wants to just like see how she's doing. Like, are you okay? Um, she, you mean, what, what do you mean? Uh, I'm fine. Oh, I just, I mean, I just noticed that when he mentioned the name Tatiana, you, you got a chill and you, yeah, I mean, it's happening again right now. Do you not? <laughs> it's when, when that name has been said, I, well, uh, do you know the feeling when you're in a party? And, um, well, you're not really paying attention, but suddenly something draws your attention across a room. It's as if someone said your name. You didn't hear it, but whatever conversation happening there, you're sure that it happened. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, it's like you're calling my name, but it's not Irina. It's something deeper inside me, and there's something that is hearing and listening and remembering I can't I, I have no access to it myself but there's there's something there I, I can't explain it it almost sounds like a past life experience if you you know believe in those sort of things the thing is you you were taken in by your father and raised as his what? Alimus. Oh, you didn't know that. <laughs> Gee. Oh my god, Alimus. I'm gonna go see about those horses. <laughs> um, Jezwaldo has done has done the most math he's ever done oh in his life and determined god. that we need five horses, so he's gonna go see about that. Oh, no. so maybe, I'm gonna stick around. Maybe the time is for the truth to come out for that. Oh, I think the cat's out of the bag already, Elimus. <laughs> You just need to go through with it. What, Elimus? What are you we'll talking calculate. about? We were told that you were raised by your father, or your the man who raised you. You were found as a child and raised with your brother, or your you were adopted. If it helps, it was something that was mentioned to us by the priest in Barovia. Odovich? Oh, mm. He knew this the whole time. Apparently Never told me. So. I think not telling you is Ismark. to keep you safe, I think. Ismark never spoke of you as anything other than the most beloved sister. Blood relation or no, we don't know what he knew. It was never something we spoke about. But I, blood relation or no, that should not affect your relationship with him. I mean, he may not. Well, he would be aware, probably. I was going to say he know. may not be. Yeah. Of who you but it doesn't really change are. how much he loved you. Of who you are has been kept secret for a reason. Then who am I, if not the daughter of... Maybe. In... Kolyan Indirovich. Who am I then? You're still the daughter of him. Doesn't matter who... It doesn't matter what blood you came from. It's the family that you come into and that you eventually have the ability to choose. Those are the people that matter. And if he's the man who raised you, if he's the man who spent years of his life and his spirit to raise you up into the world and help you become the woman that you are, then he is your father and it doesn't matter who else you are, except for who you decide to be. I agree with Claire, but also in this case, it does matter who you are and who your bloodline is. That's why I think he's after you. That would be my, that's the only reason I brought it up. 
I didn't yes. mean to start this whole conversation. Your lost father is your lost father. He may not be your birth father. We don't know who that is. Maybe more research will help with that. I'm, I'll need to think on all of this. Thank you for your words and your eventual honesty. To be honest, it slipped our minds until this moment. But yes, it's about time that you probably did know. We it must we seem a little learn. thing to you, I suppose. No, actually, in fact, it's a big thing. It's a very important big thing. Clearly he wants you. And you're tied to that past woman. What's her name? Tatiana. Tatiana. How long ago was it? 150 years ago? That was the woman in Berez. Lord knows how long ago Tatiana oh, yeah. lived. Yeah. <clears throat> Maris might have a point, though. For... Remember how they were saying that people can't leave here? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, when they die. They just get recycled. Yeah. So there it might not even be a blood relation issue. It might just be the spirit of this person sticking around. Yeah, who she is in essence. My guess is are uh, the woman that died 150 years ago that had a babe. That obviously isn't you. <laughs> but descendants, potentially. Who knows? Well, one way or another, with your blessing, Irena, we will bring you to safety at the Abbey of St. Markovia. We just need to collect the rest of our things, get Sarif to see a cat, and we'll be on our way. Seems to be the best course of action between Donovich and the priest here. They seem to be, well, they speak highly of this abbot. Seems he is. Yeah. Do you, I, 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 do you want a hug? I would need a hug. If you don't, it's fine. It's fine. I just thought I'd offer. Adorable, Maris. She looks down, kind of looks up and cracks a bit of a smile and says, you've been so kind to me, Maris. And she does. She will embrace you. Thought she was Bring it saying, in! Oh, fuck off. <laughs> but do what? What, the, what on <laughs> earth makes you think that oh. that horse is worth 75 gold pieces? That's what it says in the book. At the stockyard, the guy will say, Do you have any other options right now? How many horses do you have to sell? How is that relevant? Because if I'm going to buy many, I'm thinking perhaps I will require a discount. You'll require a discount, huh? I will. Bulk discount. How many you, know, are you buying? I am very well connected with the, the Vactors. That's so? It is. Yes, our, uh, our star is rising. She seems to be uh, doing quite well, and a big reason for that is because of me and my friends. So, if you would do us a favor, then could definitely let her know. Make a persuasion check. With pleasure. Twenty-two. Oh, that just rolled over the one. <laughs> Went so slow. Hmm. All right. I need five horses. What can you do for me? Seventy gold apiece, and will include feed and tack. How much? That's a month of me own wages plus extra goods. 
That's pretty good. Donated to the Vakter cars. Right, right. So, 70 apiece. That is... But that's a couple hundred gold, right? That'll be 350 gold. Yes. 350 gold, right. I will give you... some of that now. If you will prepare the horses. And the rest will come when we are ready to leave. That's fine. Just bring the payment when you're ready to leave. Right. But they will be ready. The horses will be ready to go. I mean, at a moment's notice. For House Wachter, anything. All right. Here's 200 gold. Hmm. You will take it gladly and sort of shout to a um, uh, one of the stable boys and they will get to... They will hear activity happening behind you. All right, I'm going to take careful note of the horses that are being prepared and where they are kept. Okay. All right. Okay. Make a... Uh, go ahead and make a um, perception check. Oh, crap. All right. Not bad. 15? Well, okay. Yeah. All right. You feel like you have you've you got your surroundings pretty well uh, locked in. Okay, all right. Here we go. Okay. Um, horse, horse Rictavio will um, switch back. He will um, mutter a few words, and suddenly you will see him transform back into the half-elf sort of jester bard clothing. Um and as he is going through the streets, he will go back to the stockhouse and will, um, upon, he will gather some raw meat, open a hatch at the top of his wagon, which you will hear rocking back and forth. And Zarev, if you climb up with him, you will indeed see the form of a massive, armored, saber-toothed tiger. You don't get okay. the armored stats, but... No. Um, <laughs> But that he has so cool. indeed. It seems he has indeed crafted like it's like battle cat for this <laughs> saber tooth tiger. It, I'm just I'm just looking at it, and you just see it very rapidly. My tongue goes to each eye over and over, cleaning them off. <laughs> staring Gotta get at that it. 2020 vision. Yeah, take it all in, sorry. Uh, is, <laughs> was Maris able to also scramble up there? <laughs> this is not a thing she'd want to miss. <laughs> Yes, yes. Anyone who wants a look, yeah. oh, come up. Wow. I come over to where they are. Uh, Linus, this fellow at the at the stable, he he's trying to extort us. I think. I paid him three hundred gold, and now he wants like twice that for the horses. Do you think you could have a word with him? If I have a word, I guess what you mean. Yes, I could try. Fantastic. But they're all ready. If uh, all we need is just to leave with them, let's go. Um, while while everyone's off cat viewing, I'm gonna get Victor and tell him we're getting ready to go. Is all right. Gonna be a cutscene. I, I just want to watch them have a conversation. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> So whoever is going to the stables goes. You see um, there are together. a couple horses ready in the stockyard uh, being sort of attended to by a couple stable boys and such. And the head of the stable is uh, the stable master is there among them and turns, sees it coming and says, well then, is this your patron the rest of the money? Oh, but I already paid you all the money. Don't you remember? You owe me 150 gold. Do I? Roll persuasion. Intimidation. I'm sure, I'm sure he's paid you already. Thank you. He's oh. paid me 200 of the promised 350. I'm sure he hasn't. And I'll use my hypnotic gaze. Okay. While he's you, doing that, I'm going to go You are in the midst of about six people, by the way. There are I'm a number of stable hands around him. I'm just looking at him. I'm not doing anything. Does he need a distraction? What the fuck? I don't know. It sounds like he's going for it. So. Sorry, turn right. into the cat. 
<laughs> oh my god, he's going to eat all of the horses! <laughs> Is is everyone there or? Yeah, I'm assuming we're all with that. I mean, Gavin. I went. I just know that Claire went to go talk to her boyfriend. <laughs> Are they just coming and meeting us there? I don't, I'm just yeah. curious what the situation is. I have a um, first roll of the night, a uh, natural twenty oh. or a twenty on <laughs> the <No> wisdom <laughs> save. <laughs> this commoner, he just. Ugh. What's the Hang problem? on a sec. Something Look, strange I, about this place, isn't I it? I don't want any trouble with the the Voxers. I'll look. I'll straighten this out with Ernst. Okay, like I. I don't <laughs> oh, know what that's a great idea. Excellent, excellent idea. Very good. Yes, Ernst will take care of us. All right. Like so this. pay me, pay me the rest, and you can settle it up right, with him. Whatever you're supposed to be doing. Look, I'm just trying to live here. Okay. This he is. He said he's already paid you three hundred. That's more than enough. That's a little, he's a lying. He gave me 200. Well. I know just Waldo's character. He's not a liar. Would you like some orange juice? And oh, Jesus. Did you bring the picture don't, with don't, you? Whatever you're doing, don't try that again. Do what? I need to call the guards? No. And the, whoever's with the guards now? Okay, no, no, hard. you don't need to do that. I believe we agreed on 300. I think 300 is more than enough for these ragged beasts. Uh, I usually sell them for 75 and Who I too? gave you a discount. Look, I look around. Who to? Who's going to buy it? Who's got 75 gold here? Uh, they're fine horses. They're riding horses. They, they can, they'll take you across. Look, I don't want any trouble. It's Oh, now I'm feeling bad for this Give man. Give me another the hundred. Small, I'll the small sell them to you for three hundred. I sitting don't. On your shoulder. <laughs> whatever you're trying to do, just we just want to leave. Let us. me go. Let my stable hands go. Take them. It's fine. Just no, another it, hundred. It would have gold, been a lot easier. If cover you my costs. Okay. It would have been a lot easier if you weren't so smart. But the fact that you are, well, fine. No problem. Um, I if, found this is my business. This is anyway. clear. I don't Does anybody have any more gold? I'll go over to Claire and I say, I don't believe this man was extortionating. So maybe just pay him the 150. That's more than enough. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just... He's looking very nervously around now, and there are stable boys just sitting him. there holding the reins, like looking about, not sure what to do. I'll get, I'll get the gold off Claire, who's obviously carrying the party funds, and I'll hand him over. There's 150 there. I apologize for my friend. Please don't. I, we're happy to help the will of Lady Voxter, but she, she did say she wanted the town to prosper, and I, she does. I have to pay them. He looks around to the um, kids holding the reins and such, and yeah. yes, want, yes, it's I want right. to pay them. It's fine. It's not a problem. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Thank you for the horses. Good day, sir. Maris leaves the jug of orange juice. <laughs> So, uh, Jiswaldo, did the 200 that you initially paid come out of your personal funds? It did. Or, okay. Just want to make sure I've got my math right. Yeah, so we paid him 350 altogether. Which is what they cost. Oh, he, he didn't end up taking the... Okay. No, 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 that's what I said. I'd go and get the extra 150. Yeah, yeah. it's all good. Pay him. Got it. Because <laughs> obviously it was, I was, that was still a discount. by Jiswaldo. Not a so huge one, but... <laughs> Well, I was lied to by Gisvaldo, so I didn't know that at the time. So Right, well, old habits and all. <laughs> you know, what did you say that we wanted 600 gold or something, he said? I said the number. 600? <laughs> I'm sure we could watch it back on the VOD. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I do believe I did say 600. I think you said you paid like 300 and you wanted them to yeah. 300. <laughs> yeah. Everything I said was a lie. <laughs> Is it just uh, these aren't even horses. for you? I stood up for you. <laughs> well, that was a mistake. Does this stuff just like spill out of your mouth without you even like it controlling does. it? It really does. <laughs> Have you somehow, somehow like severed the connection between your mouth and your brain? It took many, many years to do. I mm. highly recommend it. Mm. I, yeah, I obviously no. find out that the deal was 350 and I give him the rest, so which is 150. So, yeah. 
Uh, while we're getting ready on the horses, I look to just wilder and say, good deal on the horses, by the way. Eh, it could have gone better. So, we have horses, we have compatriots. <laughs> um, I when, when, when we were getting Victor out from the upstairs, I'll check in with um, the owners of the Blue Water Inn, just let them know where we're headed. Um, and we can swing back and we'll be swinging back in this direction soon. So. These horses are all going to die, aren't they? Apparently possible. I hope not. We should also check in with Casimir on our way out. Oh, yeah, so we we have... to... Hopefully he's got a horse. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! You're well, right. I, I assumed that wasn't... Victor was going to be riding with Claire. That's also what I assumed. Speaking of Victor, is he around? I thought that there was enough for everyone. I forgot about the, uh, the, the five wizard. Five horses and a giant elk. So there is yeah. eight It should us. be enough. Uh, Arena so... and Maris have called like yeah. shotgunsies for Got the it. giant elk. There's eight yeah. of us that need rides. So I'm only slim. So I'd probably go with me and Marie. Sure. Arena. So and then the rest of you have everyone else has a horse. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Including Victor. <laughs> Who's with us? Yes. It was if with you us. retrieve him. And yes, I retrieved will... him. Okay. It cost Maris us the Tome of Strahd. He better be awesome. <laughs> Maris says good morning to Victor. <laughs> hey. <laughs> how'd, you sleep? Like... how'd you sleep, buddy? Um, I think I still have hay in my ear, but oh, it's fine. It's better than the stocks. I I wonder how my parents are doing back there. Do you think they let them out yet? Um, can Barry see if there's any hay in his ear? <laughs> hey, let me there take is my scope. Just kind of like uh, sticking out of his hair in the back. There's yeah, like a she little... just like she does a little little groovy poo. <laughs> kind of twitches a little bit. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, well, you know, I'm Better. sure I'm sure your parents are fine, bud. She like whacks him on the back. <laughs> no, they're dead. Oh my god, Alimus! <laughs> dropping bot did you actually say that out loud? We tried to save him, but they were <laughs> too far gone. You were dropping the worst bombs today. I know. <laughs> what he takes hell? a long, hard look at you, Alimus, and he says yeah. Would you prefer I lied? Hmm. Serves them right. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you could avenge Fine. them one day. Well, that worked out. Yeah, exactly. I don't feel bad. I <laughs> said so you can avenge them one day. Hmm. Your power's growing. Hmm. You okay? He seems a little bit more withdrawn from this time out, though. Mm -hmm. well, Alright. We might as well head get going. So heading out from Valaki is what I hear. Yeah. Um with like I said, a, just a quick pass to the Dusk Elves to uh, make sure Casimir knows that yes, we are indeed gonna drop off our compatriots okay. and then come back. You will know that most of the um uh, what am I saying? The Vistani have cleared out. Um, and so the Dusk Elf hovels remain, though it's not as lively as it was before, and easy enough to deliver that message to Casimir. Now, on the little map here, because we miss her, I'll use little Mary icon as a, uh, um, as a party icon. That's adorable. Oh. So, heading out from Valaki, yes. Sounds yeah. like towards Kresk. You'd know to head east or west. In fact, you know to head the opposite of east. Hang on, if I remember right, isn't this map the wrong way around? 
No. No? Oh, okay. Uh, is it... Death House oh, no, was that not... way. Okay, yeah. Death There's yeah. a giant compass yeah, in the right. bottom right hand corner. Yeah, this so. is right. Yeah. Yeah. Compass Rose. And you depart. The morning is chill, though not entirely uncomfortable. The mist dancing around the edges of the forest and sort of retreating 30, 40 feet in front of you as if your presence is opening up new lands beyond you with every, uh, you know, kilometer or so you travel. Not too far out, you cross a large stone bridge. A river rages underneath you, which you can turn to the right and see probably originates off in Lake Zarovich. Going across this well-built bridge, you then see the road comes to a crossroads, an X intersection with branches to the northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. The lower half of a snapped wooden signpost thrusts upward at an angle near the eastern elbow of this intersection. The top half of the sign, featuring arms pointing in four directions, lies in the weeds nearby. Is there anyone around? Make a perception check to look around. I want to go, I'm going to hop off my horse and take a look at that sign. Yeah, Maris is also going to head that way. She's interested. Okay. An 18 is what I have rolled. Just while though, you seem to be alone. <sighs> Besides your companions. So Did you anybody are able else to not really care for that place? Certainly not my favorite place I've ever been. I kind of think we left it in worse shape. Like I've never really left it, so I don't really know what to expect out here. Oh, it's gonna be okay. We'll we'll protect you. Can I cast? Player. Can I cast spells now? Uh, wait until oh. you think they'll actually do some good. Yeah, when we need. Oh, okay. I can do. I want to do one right now, though. What, what one would you what? like to yeah. do? What kind of spells? I'll show you. Ooh, can you <laughs> tell me what it's gonna be first? <laughs> I'll show you. Um, and what he begins an incantation and touches himself, and you see a shimmering form around his body. Ooh, what is that, bud? It seems to disappear. Oh, that's okay. It just protects me. Oh, it looks really cool. Could you that do that on other people? a smart spell to cast. Just out of mm -hmm. curiosity. Could I you... usually start the day off with it, but you said they might kill me if I cast any spells, so I didn't. Well, out here, if you want to resume that daily ritual, I think that's okay. Okay. Can you do it on other people? Yes. Oh, nifty. Anyone want some mage armor? Sure. Yeah? Okay. Cool. <laughs> and he'll reach over and he'll cast mage armor on you. Boom! <laughs> Save me after the cast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to teach you anything. I'll, I can teach you that sometime, too. Oh, I know. I just didn't prepare it today. Oh, okay. But thank you. You could teach Mine's... me. You could teach me. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Air. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, so you have the top post. of this signpost, which kind of makes an X, and there are, um, you know, four different... Um, uh, uh, signs pointing basically to different directions. Okay. That and has been are... knocked into the grass. So the 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 uh, they're labeled. Um. Let's see here. Ah. Uh. One arm indicates Kresk and the Tsolenka Pass. One indicates Lake Baratok, one indicates Valaki and Ravenloft, and one indicates Berez. Okay. Um, well, that's good to know in which direction. I, I orient it such that Valaki and Ravenloft are pointed behind us, so I assume... Okay. So it looks well, like we have to do, go left. 
Mm -hmm. Right, east. No, west. The opposite of east. So you can go southwest or northwest. I think southwest is the way we go. Southwest. Um, which one? Which is the one that seems it when you or reorient the thing correctly? Which is the one that goes to Krusk and the Slanka Pass? That would be southwest. Okay. Great. So we should probably head in that direction then. I agreed. Let's go. What was the the compass direction for Perez? South. Directly mm -hmm. south. Just trying to remember, didn't the people who worked at the at the Blue Water didn't they tell us something very specific about road dangers? About Perez? No, about um, just traveling. Just oh, in general. Generally. Yes. No, so well, I think Ernst times. had told us something about um, after a um, like a crossroads or something that there's like a mansion somewhere headed south or something like that oh all right well we're not going to be heading south maybe we'll see that some other time is that elf yeah. by the way that's good casimir yeah i don't think we were bringing him right now i, I think we were just telling him was... like oh, okay. hey we're going and we'll come back later for amber temple oh since right. he wanted to go with us on that bit yeah 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 so we're just going to crest yeah mm -hmm. okay. with our <laughs> giant elk we head south. Yeah. Southwest. Ooh, apparently, at Mount Bar Baratok, there's a mad mage. Oh. <laughs> I can see uh, Alimus is interested. <laughs> <laughs> we can yeah. maybe check that out Can't after taking our friends. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we'll we'll head in the southwest direction then. Ferris okay. Grabs one of the the horns <laughs> so she can swing up yeah he swings you up stylish so you continue mm -hmm. southwest in that case the forest begins to close in on either side of you it's a familiar uh feeling as the mist grows closer around you sort of oppressive and the trees themselves seem to poke their heads in and out almost voyeuristically looking upon your travels you hear the clopping of hoofs underneath you hear each breath you take punctuating the silence you hear no wildlife no life besides that life which you carry with you and the path goes on. I try and be as aware, as aware as I can be. Okay. So, Victor, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but when you're out here, never kill a crow. It's bad luck, right? No. Does but but not a crow, it's a raven, isn't that a thing? Well, they're the same thing, aren't they? Not quite. Just yeah, an ornithologist what? on hand. <laughs> you, you just hear a snort from the elk. <laughs> Don't you mean that crows and ravens are two different things? Yeah, I think so. Also, what why were you whispering? Think? Should we be whispering? I feel it, it, I, doesn't it feel like we should be whispering? I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I kind of like it. I mean, I, I, I'm actually I'm trying not to whisper right now, and I can't. Oh, oh, that's weird. Yeah. Me too. I don't know what your guys' problem is. Oh my god! <laughs> Jeez. Stop yelling! <laughs> so you reach a small T intersection here. You guys can... I believe you have been given this map of Barovia. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. so you yeah. can kind of pinpoint your location. Um, curving to the south is a smaller road though it's not made of compacted earth the way yours is there is a two standing stone pillars and between them extending off into the woods seems to be a rough cobblestone road 
Maybe this is what Ernst was talking about. Hmm. There are no signs Some... here. Look around for signs. Well, didn't didn't it have something to do with Make the order check. of the the silver dragon? Uh, I don't think so. Um, Ernst, all he said about it was that there's an unmarked path south, um, somewhere on the road to Krusk, and so. that it's some creepy mansion. Now. Jeswaldo would not remember this, but I'm trying to remember it. Was it not one of the were ravens who told us that the order of there was a mansion order of the silver dragon? Uh, it was definitely Ernst. Maybe oh that Ernst was the first person who told us about it, but I might not be remembering then if um, Would it be possible? Sorry. Hmm. I have a lot of notes, so it would take me a minute right. to find. Would it be possible for Maris to like reference the book? We do have the book. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I remember. So you got you would remember that um, the were ravens would have told you that in the past, once that was the home of the long past uh, order. Uh, they okay. they suspect. Ernst said it's a creepy haunted mansion. Oh, right. So we're both right. Do we feel like this is the road that, that they're talking about? It's likely. It's the first it's unmarked road south that we've seen. Fits the description. Do you think it's worth checking out? And mm, maybe not right yeah. a second. Maybe Maris, we should... sorry, from your, um, from looking through the book and having possessed it and read it, it's more history. Um, they don't really speak to the direct location, though they do refer to it as Arjun Vost Holt, as the the name of the, uh, um, their uh, head headquarters. Sounds silly, but their, um, yeah. Well, I mean. They're didn't Bastion. didn't uh, the um, Recta Victor, Rictavio Rudolph guy, didn't Rudolph. he say that the, the doors to Kresk were closed? How, how do we plan to deal with that? Knock loudly. <laughs> Maybe if we had something to offer. We have gold. Well, what else do you have in mind? Well, maybe it there's like something maybe th maybe there's something. something at the mansion something that would be useful I mean, for the same reasons that we weren't planning on trekking these people up a mountain to the amber temple i think that still stands here well we'll have to pass by this way again won't we yeah but no we'll, 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 we'll come back the gates are, of crest are closed if the yeah. doors... and if the gates of crest are closed then we'll form a plan from there. There's no guarantee that anything in that mansion is going to be something that they want. That's all that. But it's a side quest, Claire. Are you ah. a completionist? Now? <laughs> Are you appealing to my completionist nature? I am. I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, but that's alright. Um... How no, ready I... are you to kill the people at the gates of Kresk? Um... <laughs> ready and able. Or at least climb over and let us in, do a sort of sneaky, sneaky, openy, openy situation. Right. Kill, my kill, middle open, name. open, One right. of my middle, <laughs> many middle names. I'm going to put it right there before, right after Tomb of Fire. Oh, I'm excited to hear it. As each commoner dies at their last breath. <laughs> better with straw. <laughs> All right. What do we no, think? We, well, we'll I just thought I would. Like, I just thought I would mention it. You okay, will so one hundred and fifty thousand percent come back this way. <laughs> How far is Crest? I don't think that's actually a number. I don't care. <laughs> How far is Crest from here? Do we know? Uh, who are you asking? Just the group. I don't know. How long, yeah, how long we've been traveling and how far? Oh, you've been traveling for trotting along for maybe two hours or so. Oh, I forgot but, on the uh, map. Okay. No, oh, we're fine. Just keep going. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, we carry on. Yeah. yeah. You move along, you see a smaller path to your, uh, branching up to your right, to the left again, and then you reach another bridge. There's a weather-worn signpost here. Three arms of the sign point along the three branches of the road. The arm pointing north reads Kresk, and through the woods you can see an arching stone bridge spanning a river. The arm pointing east reads Valaki, and gradually slopes up the way you came. 
The arm pointing southwest reads the Wizard of Wines. Ooh. The road slopes <laughs> gently downward in that direction. You also notice there is a chill to the air. As the day has gone on, the wind has picked up a bit and it is beginning to be more biting. It might come as some surprise to you all, but I have spent a great deal of time in the company of bandits. And this would be a perfect place for an ambush. Well, it's a good thing that we're hard to kill. Are we also good at finding ambushes? When he I says that, generally I... speaking leave that sort of thing to people like Elimus and Sauri. <laughs> yeah, when he says that, I sort of take a few steps forward and start looking around. I look up from my book. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I just don't go out. See if there's anyone around on this side or on the other side. I'm just, perception check. To, I'm just going to use my passive to just keep a an eye on things. 20 okay. total. All right. <clears throat> You're looking about and you don't hear anything. Far to the north, you hear what appears to be the howling of one wolf, two and three answer, four perhaps. An entire pack in the distance. Am I the only one that hears it, or does everyone hear it? I had seventeen perception. Um, the twenty gave you that. So okay. Uh, so I so I'm sort of like looking around for a bit, and then, um, he sort of stops and like lifts up his head more, snorts a bit, and like paws at the ground. And oh, oh and wait, then... wait, 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 wait! I see this at the circus. <laughs> Okay. Maris swings down. And and then I, I like put my antlers sort of more forward and start like very slowly walking forward. So so right, for yes and no. If if it's one paw, that's yes. Okay, just follow. But two paws no, this will work. Two paws is no. He's walking, it's isn't he? So I, that's a I've, yes. I've stopped him, I'm looking at him. That's a yeah. yes, that's another yes. Oh oh okay, okay. so <laughs> is there danger? Uh, one paw. Is it close? <laughs> Two paws. Should we keep going? I just turn and start walking. Okay. Right. <laughs> that is a yes. With, See? With, with Alimus' intelligence, and obviously this place full of them, Alimus will say, is it wolves? Uh, yeah, one, he like stops, pause once, and then keeps going. Follow. Like this, like paw mechanic. We'll know when they're close. <laughs> the horses will know. If any, if anyone close to him can hear him, like quietly making um, elk noises, which sounds mm -hmm. kind of like a uh, like a it, it's a terrible sound. It's just it like sounds a like a dying a dying cow. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awful. But he's doing it like very quietly under his breath, and he's mumbling in giant elk to himself. He's mumbling in Sylvan. What do the closed captions say for the elk mumbling? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want, what is it? They should just follow me. I don't know why they don't. I know where I'm going. We can handle some wolves. Look at these horns. Have they seen these horns? That's a Limus. I was well, continuing good. on the um, Limus. Yeah. Is, uh, right. um, he speaks the words a lingua comprehendent and we will start speaking that over and over again and start casting it ritually. Comprehend languages? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Nice. All right. It'll be a bit, but you'll get there. Um, as you guys cross the stately stone bridge, to the right, you see the river opens up into a lake, which has been labeled for you Lake Baratok. And on this lake, just barely visible through the fog, you see a tower extending out through the mists. It appears to be perched on a peninsula jutting out into the lake, standing by itself. We're really going to just ride right by that? I mean, I'm side quests after we drop off the escorts, just Waldo. Having... Maris is also put out. <laughs> Trust me, Alamus wants to be there too. <laughs> but oh, no. Oh, I'm sure there's all sorts of fun shit for a mage in there. But no, Claire has to. <laughs> joking. joking. <laughs> uh oh. Don't oh, poke just... the Claire. But... <laughs> <laughs> Who invited the paladin? I mean, really. Who's been saving your lives with crit smites? Yeah, right, right, right. 
the yeah, hands. wind picks up even more as you guys continue. The air grows cold and you see the mist seems to thicken around you and for a bit you think it's uh, it's like bits of it flying past you. You realize though that there is snow here going past your face. Occasionally a snowflake stops on your nose, gets caught in your eyelash and you can see it now accumulating on the hair and warm cloaks of your companions and glancing behind your footprints now leave a trail behind in gray white does this seem natural go ahead make a nature check oh damn it Hagnam nature check. 23. Elimus, as you've been continuing, you've felt your breath change, you felt the temperature and the patterns of the wind change. You've been ascending. You feel like it's been gradual. Okay. Not many would have noticed, perhaps those particularly in tune with nature, perhaps the elk would notice, but you've gained quite a bit of elevation from here. You can tell by looking back. So between the drop in temperature and the change in elevation, it seems fitting that the snow would be here. I look up while I'm chanting. I'm sleeping. Look around. So, uh, does my spell complete? <sighs> yes, it does. I hate the cold. <clears throat> I'm just going to listen to what uh, Sarif is saying. Uh, sorry, yeah, what he, are you mumbling? He sounds very different um, than what you usually hear. Dumb and he's humans. just sort of... Yeah, he's just like these damn uh, smooth skins. and uh, He's just complaining about how <laughs> everyone <laughs> gets so caught up on nonsense all the time. <laughs> Maris offers and, him orange juice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it is in the language giant elk, which is a thing that I can speak as a giant elk. Nice. Well, as you guys continue, the road and under, you know, sour of his mumbling, and it is beginning to get very cold, beginning to eat through the toes of your boots. That feeling of cold toes that just you can't quite do anything about, especially when they're sitting in the stirrups of your horse. Or elk. And the road branches here north and climbs a rocky escarpment, ending at a gatehouse built into a 20-foot high wall of stone, reinforced with buttresses every 50 feet or so. The wall encloses a settlement on the side of a snow-dusted mountain spur. Beyond the wall, you see the tops of snow-covered pines and thin white wisps of smoke. The somber toll of a bell comes from a stone abbey that clings to the mountainside high above the settlement. The steady chime is inviting, a welcome change from the deathly silence and oppressive fog to which you have grown accustomed. It's hard to tell at this distance, but there seems to be a switchback road clinging to the cliffs that lead up from the walled settlement to the abbey. Sorry, have you heard the uh, any more of the wolves? He says that in giant elk. I, I don't think you can speak no, it. You can understand. Sylv oh, yeah, oh, in yeah, Sylvan, yeah. got it. No, no, no. Comprehend you... languages. I can only understand it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. tongues is the spell tongues which allows right. you to yeah. speak. Yeah. So you can you can, you can you speak heard. in common, but he could answer and you could understand him. Uh, yeah, I say if you speak you... Elvish or Sylvan, I can understand that too. Yeah, but you can understand common anyway. So yeah. I, I'd say to you, you heard much of more of the wolves. Have I? Not since your first still, the time you took some time to be still and listen around since then, no? You can reply in elk. No, <laughs> no, they're not bothering. Uh, wait. Yeah. No, they're not bothering us. Be wary. They're probably afraid of me, I assume. <laughs> I doubt it. He's pretty, uh, he's pretty real. You'll just see the, the elf he's, like, he realizes I'm looking down at. <laughs> so, should we try to go into the city or should we make straight for the abbey? Well, the switchback pass that comes from 
within the walls, or is it? Does it look like it's possible to sort of circumvent the walls? I think it's got to be inside. Seems to be. Okay. Well, we'll, well have to approach no the gates then. Anybody have a plan for how this is going to work? Ask nicely. <clears throat> yeah, I think I can. Let me knock down the gates. And knock loudly. Let's not antagonize. I think we've antagonized enough people in the last several days, so let's let's just see what asking nicely gets us. Small mage, tell them I'll turn into something that can ram the gates. <laughs> At, uh, a last resort, Sarif. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? You don't want to know. Okay. So the air grows colder as you approach this walled settlement. Two square towers with peaked roofs flank a stone archway into which is set a pair of 12 foot tall iron bound wooden doors. Carved into the arch above the doors is a name, Kresk. The walls that extend from the gatehouse are 20 feet high. Atop a parapet, you see four figures wearing fur hats, clutching spears. They watch you nervously. Um, who, hello? who goes there? Who are you? Um, my name is Claire. These are my companions. Um, we are hoping to, um, we're, we're hoping to get to the Abbey. Um, we have some friends who could use some help from um, the Abbot there. We also bring a very important message from Valaki. Important message. Hmm. You see that you hear them kind of mumbling back and forth. Just stay there. Stay there. We'll just wait a second. And one of them seems to run off. Cool up. Why? Why do you seem fearful? Are you under attack? Well, we're just just doing our jobs. We're told to be cautious. God, we just wait a bit. Sure. It's all right. We're not going anywhere. How many times have you had to question people at the gate? Every time someone comes here. Well, I understand. We How many know. times has that been? They kind of look at one another. Just wait, please. And uh, Pat, I, don't, I don't think it's been many times. I think this might be the first time. Yeah, they don't there, seem like they have a protocol in place. After a few moments, you see another figure arrive on the parapet. Um, he is also wearing a fur hat, but there's long flowing hair coming over his shoulders, and he has a rather full beard. Um, he is also dressed in what appears to be fine clothes, all of which is covered by what seems to be a rather um, luscious wolf skin cloak. Hello there, travelers. Why have you come to Kresk? Safe haven. We are hoping to get to the Abbey uh, we were recommended to go there to provide safe haven to a couple of our compatriots. Um, and we yeah. bring an important message from Valaki. What he said. Tell me this message. Uh, well, I would, but it might be information you don't want just anyone to know. These around me are trustworthy. I assure you, certainly more trustworthy than you, though I mean no offense. Uh, would you mind uh, doing this, us the honor of uh, revealing who you are to make sure that our message is being delivered to the right individuals? You speak to Dmitry Kreskov, Burgomaster and Lord of the city. That would do it. Can you prove that? He doesn't need to. What's the message? Well, what? I'm just trying to get him to open the door. He doesn't answer, but you think you can hear a tired sigh. In fact, all of his speech seems to be a bit beleaguered. And while he is a strong, 
broad-shouldered man. Um, you see a great sword strapped to his back. There's something about him that seems heavy at the moment as he's speaking to you. Tired. Carry the burden. Well, just Waldo, <clears throat> what's the message? All right, fine. The town of Valaki has been taken over by the Vakter. The Burgomaster and his wife have been slain, and we have brought their only son here for safety. And we should take him in. Why? That's a good question. Do you not ever open the door? Only for friends of the city. And what That's can us. we do to... my own wards. That's what us. can we, we, we do friends. to prove that we can bring friendship to the city? By my oath to protect this city, I will not open it to just anyone. However... We are in dire need of, well, wine. Maris does a little. It seems strange to you, but it is a needed commodity among these people. We live a hard life here. We work, we get by, we survive. And it's one of the few luxuries any of us can afford. And we have paid for this wine already, but it is quite late. If you were to do this favor for the city, my oath of office would require me to be hospitable. Hmm. I presume this is a shipment that was supposed to come from the uh, Wizard of Wines? At least a week ago, yes. All right. What time of day is it, DM? It's getting to be about mid-afternoon. Since you had horses, you were able to... You, It's about four and a half miles, five miles as the crow flies. Probably you've ridden about 12 the way the road is curving. and You've stopped a few times to examine signposts and um, debate side quests and such. Tell me, um, Burgomaster, we're happy to do this for you. But we're wary, we're cold, we're hungry. You could have guards posted outside the inn that we can stay in. Or we could stay in the gatehouse. Just to get warm for now. We do have warm clothing, but not for everyone. Maybe some of our party can stay here under watch. We're happy to do this task that you ask of us. He looks between you and says... You would leave the ones in your charge yes. for us to watch. Well, they, they would only... We don't know. We don't know what dangers await. We don't know the reason to why your shipment was lost or delayed. And personally, not inclined to drag those who are under protection into an unknown, potentially dangerous situation. I understand. Well, I look to Claire. Victor can come with us. He can handle himself. Well. I want to, I do want to turn to Irena and Victor and ask them if they would like to come with us and if they feel comfortable doing so, or whether um, they would like to stay here on this little endeavor. Victor looks at you, Claire, and kind of smiles and says, I, I can protect her. Here or on oh, out there? They shouldn't. They shouldn't know that. If it's here, I'll just pretend that I'm weak and stuff, and um, I'll protect oh, her. Clever. <laughs> so, you, are Irena, you staying here or coming with? She uh, she looks about and says, "There's something familiar about this place." I. If they let us, I will stay. They seem to be, well, 
It seems to be as secure a place as any for a moment, at least. Just don't tarry. Certainly not. I'll come straight back to you. I'll look out. All right. See. These two will stay, as they don't have warm water clo clothing, warm weather clothing. Hmm. Make a persuasion check. I mean, we will definitely be able to accomplish this for you. I mean, look at the size of our elk. Think about how much wine we could carry back with that. Twenty. Twenty. Very nice. He doesn't acknowledge your comments. Some of the more offhand comments or, you know, um, little bits, he seems to acknowledge, if just barely, with sighs and with shifting of his position but eventually he turns to a guard and makes a motion and the gatehouse <laughs> creaks open sorry <laughs> thou just kidding <laughs> <laughs> the two may stay thank you all right we'll be back for you guys soon no worries a wine run didn't see that coming. Uh, finally, the dead weight is gone. I'm still on there, right? Or no? I think so. <laughs> okay. I say, Sarif, what are you talking about Marisa? <laughs> which, which one is that? I hear my name and I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> Huh? Oh you, no no! She's the blessed healer. She's she's my she's one of my favorites. <laughs> I say, uh, you're fine. You're one of his favorites. Ah, little Pat. <laughs> All right, and it just runs out probably. I say, um, so this will be this will put us in good stead with you and your city, correct? If you accomplish this, I would be honor bound to host you within my walls. Then you will have your wine. Shall we, friends? Yes. I'll, uh, I'll jump off the horse first and get out my warm weather clothing. All right. And then jump back on. I assume you guys are sort of heading in the direction back then of the Wizard of Wines, yes? yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, somewhere you head back, back down, and the it actually begins. The snow recedes once again, and the trail becomes it turns into a drizzle, a misty drizzle, and the road becomes muddy, descending down through the woods, meandering until eventually the trees part, revealing a mist-shrouded meadow. The trail splits. One branch heads west into the valley and the other leads down a, uh, leads south into dark woods. In the valley, you see a wooden signpost that reads, Vineyard. As you continue your way down, you see well, in this valley, amongst the rolling hills are Grapevines seem to be planted. Old, gnarled, wise looking vines rising up, and occasionally you see a blood red berry sitting beneath maybe one or two leaves. The vines are old and tired, some of them barely having any leaf, let alone fruit. As you continue, they you hear creaking crackling sounds around you as if the vines are groaning shifting stretching moving are in they? fact Alimus and Sauri <laughs> out of the corner of your eye you could swear you saw a couple of them move and shift and arrive in place that's disturbing. Do I have any idea what they could be creature-wise? Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Oh, I thought you were 
we're going to do knowledge nature but um well they look like grapevines to you 16 on the dice so that would be perception 18. okay um looking out there it simply looks looks like vines to you So what you are see we a vi down Someone. the sorry yeah go ahead I was just gonna make conversation but please down the valley ahead of you you see what appears to be what must be the vineyard tall stately building um, three stories high though no activity around it and then that crunching noise comes back all around you and you see what seems to be a more shifting as if trees are going back and forth like in a storm but these are the vines just shifting shifting and you notice them coming up over the hill growing taller and taller it almost it's almost impossible to tell with your vision but suddenly you realize these aren't just vines sitting and moving that they're legged arms, almost forms of a head as a dozen, two dozen on your right, three dozen maybe forty or so wooden creatures begin to march down towards the path towards you. And you said forty? They attack. Mm-hmm. Holy yeah. shit balls. <laughs> but, but they attack. Oh, Where'd yeah, my we'll... player map go? Here we go. <clears throat> Please place yourselves in the middle of this map. Oh, man. I say, oh, she. Oh, you know she. what? <laughs> this is a great time to have a rapier. <laughs> Please make my thing huge. And okay. I believe Maris is still riding. Yeah. Ah, yes. How sh how would how should we deal with horses? Um. Do you know, DM? Mounted combat. Yeah. Hmm. If you would prefer to, um, sort of at the beginning of combat, just say, "Hey, go away." They can run away, but obviously, that might mean something for later. Uh, it's up to you how you decide to act. For now, it sounds like you guys are, in fact, mounted. Since you chose to buy horses. Um, I think just more in the practical sense, I meant more of like how much space do they occupy? They're large oh, creatures. They're large creatures. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we could just imagine that we were on them. Okay. Yep. That's fair. Fine with that. So we just our speed just becomes whatever the horse's speed is. Holy shit! Did you say there's 40 of these? Each one represents about 12. Oh. Coming at you. Oh my god. Okay. They're coming at you in hordes. So if each one of these is 12, it's a lot more than 40. Do I know what they are? Now that they've revealed themselves, you could make a nature check. Hey, Alimus. I think you should use some fire-based attacks. 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're coming. Don't worry. You also see a couple ragged humans with rotten teeth and rags for clothes on each side. Oh. They seem to be running at you. Alive? They do seem to be, yeah. Covered in animal skins. Oh, okay. For a second, My I people. There it is. Your favorite smooth skin. All right. Now, let's roll some initiative. It's just about break time, ain't it? Getting close. Um, yeah, let's do that once we get back. We'll roll some initiative, oh, what a get all set. Initiative roll. Can I keep my initiative roll? <laughs> yep. Oh, I think gosh. that's the best initiative I've rolled this entire campaign. Of course, we're keep we're, we're saving these initiative rolls. Okay, for the, good. <laughs> for when we get back. 
You've got so one, two, three. Four, Liz, five, Liz six, and Kyle six. double rolled. Yeah, yeah just edit really your guys' is. back to your original ones. And we'll three be good times to go. Edited, but every time someone so, else rolled it, messed you up. are surrounded by creatures that look like this. Oh my oh. god. Oh. It's like scary Groot. Mm -hmm. funky? I'm not seeing anything. It's, it's in, in the, the chat. Roll 20. It's in the chat, yeah. Oh. And Ugh. spiky, gnarled pieces of wood that seem to have taken on a humanoid semblance just trudging at you and one extends its hand and you see it is covered in thorns almost like the arms of a like it's a porcupine and they begin to shoot out at you Great. you are being assaulted by these and that is where we will pick up when we come back with the combat Ooh. yeah speak with plants and then i turn on my party and there you join go. The, no. <laughs> do you, you throw me off your back yeah you live happily. Does Sarif side with the druids? Does he side with his party? <laughs> he doesn't have. We shall the world see. may never Such know. conflicts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, guys, well, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. So. Welcome back, everyone. Before we left for the break, the party departed Valaki and made their way across Barovia, all the way to the snowy village of Kresk, where the Burgomaster told them he would be duty-bound to allow them to enter, should they do the town a favor. And the favor they need is retrieving a shipment of wine, which is quite late. So the party headed down there <clears throat> to the Wizard of Wine's winery, just south of Kresk, and were soon accosted by these plant-like needle creatures. Dozens of them appearing from each side, accompanied each by a mangy, ragged human clothed in animal skins. So we're going to jump into that combat in just a second. But first, I wanted to give a little shout out. Um, any of you who have tuned in on Monday nights already know that... Uh, Sean, who plays just Waldo here, is a fabulous DM. Oh, um, I love playing with him. Um, it's been fantastic. And he is running a few games that you can sign up to play. So I just wanted to give Sean a second to um, talk about how to do that. And they are, in fact, sponsoring us here at Lawful Stupid. So um, we would love to hear about that for a bit. Right, yeah. Uh, so StartPlaying.Games is an organization of... Uh, GMs who have some clout on YouTube and various uh, professional DMs who have written for Wizards of the Coast, have published modules and that sort of thing. And um, they've gotten a website together, sort of a, a vetted process of, of uh, high quality and professional DMs. And um, I am one of them for some reason. And uh, they, uh, at the moment, I have. Um, several one shots ready to go there's one there's 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 going to end up being three one shots that are all uh, based in Baldur's gate um just an introduction to the city or if you're interested moving on from the modules i eventually intend to do another descent into avernus campaign um with which you could be a part um there are links in the chat that come up every now and then um, if you're interested, or I believe you can actually, there's a, um, there's a command that you can put in, implement into chat that will give you the information that you need. Isn't that right, Jade? Yep, I just did it. Um, exclamation mark sponsor. Exclamation mark sponsor. If you're interested, I have one slot. Actually, I have, we need one more to run the module on this coming Tuesday. Uh, but we can have up to three more. Um, and then there will be other modules at subsequent times. My schedule is pretty open at the moment, so although there are times that have been specified as when I am most likely available, if you're interested, let me know and we can work something out. Um, I think it's likely that we're going to end up moving games to somewhat later in the day than what we currently have, because it just seems that they, but that's what most, shockingly, people are busy uh, in the middle of the afternoon. Um, so, uh, Obviously, we're going to be changing it to um, to something more in the evening going forward. But, uh, yeah, love to see you. 
having a lot of fun with the module we've already uh, with the uh, one shot we've already done. I'm, I'm curious to see what happens with the one shot that's coming up. But that'd be awesome if you would like to join me. Cool. Thanks. Well, now the party is on a path leading towards the winery and they are surrounded by dozens of these twig like needle creatures and two mangy humanoids clutching sticks clothed in animal skins. And Claire, amazing paladin initiative. Here. Somehow. You are the first to go. <laughs> <laughs> this has never happened to me. Um, okay, so just a sort of generalized question because I spent a little bit of time reviewing um, how things on horses work. Um, so, I'm not trying to get a detailed sense of how my horse feels right now, um, but just in general layman's terms, is my horse flipping a fuck right now, or does it seem fairly calm? Or somewhere between. Your horses have begun to skitter about and rear up a bit. Um, they are not war horses. They are simple riding horses meant to okay. take people between places and... Um, they are suddenly surrounded by many, many creatures they are unfamiliar with. And dismounting costs half movement? That maybe? would be correct. Okay. <clears throat> In that case, I would like to... I don't know whether I should stay put or if I should move. Um... Does Waldo seem to think it was best for us to stay put? So I'm going to shoot a couple Eldritch Blasts. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast so I can do that twice here. And I'm going to target uh, Senor Dirty Human Pants over here. Um, you know, that was immensely a character of me. Uh, 12. The 12 ricochets off of its skin, which totally fair. upon looking at it seems to be hardened. Um, you <laughs> almost, it looks like it cracks a bit, but doesn't bleed as if it's been, you know, preternaturally hardened against somehow. Fascinating. Um, I will shoot the other one at him. We'll see if I can do a little better. 14, rolling like shite. 14 will have the same result, unfortunately. Okay. Well, I'm going to say put then. Okay. Maris, you're up. Yes. So Maris grabs hold of the holy symbol that she has around her neck and casts a uh, bless on all members of her party, second level. Cool. There Anything else? Movement or additional? Any bonus action? There's probably well, not one you have. She is currently on our friend. <laughs> Sorry. So I think she's just gonna probably hop off. Okay. Uh, so he can go do his... Oh, <laughs> just kidding! She'll stay on! She'll stay on! <laughs> um, no, I don't know. It just, <laughs> it just depends. Sorry, do you want a buddy or it's, are you it's up to you it doesn't, it doesn't, either way is fine i don't know she kind of wants to ride a giant elk so she's gonna stay it's on. pretty awesome <laughs> yeah i mean she's never been this tall so nice i don't okay. think the little creatures can reach you <laughs> yes <laughs> elimus you're up okay um looking at the creatures coming he will point to the east of our screen and aim something at this one here around here mm -hmm. and i believe ignis of frabor should catch quite a few people uh oh uh it's only a 20 foot is it 20 foot uh, circumference is it 20 foot radius radius that's it yeah Is this what I think it is? Yep. Is this the Jade <clears throat> Special right here? Jade Special, yeah. Hopefully, I want to position it to catch all of them. Well, okay. The three on the right. 
so this is a group of I uh, just to make it easier I clumped them together so uh the top and bottom it will get about half of them on the top or bottom okay. if that makes yeah. sense so. okay I will cast that points his staff out and Ignis Frabor and a tiny little bead of fire will come out into the middle pile and just explode for 24 damage for a dexterity save for half 16 what's it the 24 all right yeah. the humanoid creature fails the ones in this middle group here are obliterated. They cannot survive even a fail, even a success. Mm -hmm. Half of the ones below you, so this group, half of them are obliterated. Same up here. There are three remaining here, three remaining here, and a pile of charred remains and some charred former grapevines <clears throat> lie there where your fireball has erupted like an atomic explosion. How hurt does a human look? Extremely damaged. Okay. Charred. <laughs> wheezing in pain. There's more of that. That's my turn. And it looks at you and points its staff forward towards all of you and begins to cast a spell. Counterspell. You're supposed to say counterspell. <laughs> Come on, Jade. Now, as, you do, as he does so, you see a couple things sprout off the top of his staff, like little whoop, whoop, wispy, cute little vines growing off the top of his staff. And you look below your feet and these vines seem to be growing out of the earth, wrapping around, reaching for your ankles. And I need everyone to make a strength saving throw. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> I said, I'll counterspell it. I counterspell oh. it. <laughs> okay. Oh, we thought you just were was, shoving I off. Like, I was, like, I was like, like, I count the spell what it. is he doing? I like, why is he <laughs> still <laughs> saying it? But yeah, I count the spell <laughs> it. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Did he forget he had it? No. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The next one will cast Fireball. The next one um, will look over and see what's happening and raise his staff in the air and do a similar motion. And we, we do still need a strength saving throw, my friends. Okay. With the uh, D4, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, that was so close to being a natural 20. God damn it. Wait, how do we roll these? On your character sheet, um, <laughs> there should be... Well, I forgot how character sheets look. <laughs> how do we do the bless? Um, oh, yeah. I've got to do that as a condition, haven't yep, I? Just click the bless. You should be able to click the D4 under her bless spell and roll 20. Oh, now, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So is this the horse that's having to make the save, or is it... Uh, your horse would have to make one as well. You all would have to. All right, so you just want to do... It's an interesting thing, because... Um... If you are still on a horse, you can roll for your horse as well, but you also have to roll. All right, so just a d20? Or do you use uh, our saving throws? Horses have, yeah, no. They, horses have a plus three to strength saving throws. All right, so. Riding just, horse stat. Just roll a d20. But first, do you want to know what, what we rolled first? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Mm, nice. <laughs> your horse did better than you, Alima, so. My horse <laughs> did. So much better than me. I'm so mad. <clears throat> I rolled a seven. This is why you shouldn't ride record. a horse. You should be a horse. <laughs> it's so you simple. know what? If I could be a horse. Okay. You need two so, levels of druid. I'll teach you. 
<laughs> I'll let you guys track this because it's a lot. Um, the success is a 12. So 12 succeeds. Those who failed are restrained. Jeswaldo and his horse are restrained. My horse is not, but I am somehow. <laughs> Your horse takes off and you just stay there. <laughs> That's what I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what is wow. this? Is it like vines that are coming up? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is the entangle spell. Ah. One moment, one moment. Conditions are strand. I am suddenly French. <laughs> And these creatures move forward, reaching out their hands, sending forth a volley of spines <clears throat> towards you. Um, two of them will attack, or the three here will attack the giant elk. <laughs> First attack is a critical hit. For right. I know, right? Ten d damage. Okay. Second attack. I'm, I thought I was bugged. I had to click a few more times. Second attack is a critical hit for 10 damage. I'm serious. I, I, I oh could screenshot God. it for you. <laughs> no, that's all right. And does a 12 hit? Uh, no. Wow, 12 doesn't hit. Okay, that's... Got an elk. 14 armor class. <laughs> hero mode commando uh, blights there. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, the ones below here, half will attack the giant elk, half will attack Maris riding on top of it. The elk I gets think, a... I think she got off. Can she get off? No, I decided I wanted oh, you to stayed on. Okay, cool, go cool, cool. down yeah, with yeah. this ship. My <laughs> highest roll against the elk is a 12, so that those will miss. Uh, I will have three attacks against the cleric, coming at a six. Can they reach her? Uh-huh. They are um, point. They are reaching out their hands, and spines are flying out ah, and uh, shooting as attacks. if a ranged attack towards her. Man, oh, man. Uh, are you restrained, Maris? Or did you make your saving throw? I made a saving throw. Nice. Okay. Um, I have a six, a natural 20, 23. I've rolled three crits. I'm not kidding. Um, and, <laughs> a, and a 15. Okay. The 23 and 15 hit. 15 hits you? 15? My armor class is 15. You don't. Do you not wear a shield? I should wear a shield. Do you have I? one? Do you have one in your inventory? I'm I literally checked this the other day. And I, I feel like your armor I class did. should be like 17 as a mm -hmm. cleric. Let me. You should be a bit no, tankier. I don't know. It's saying that I'm wearing it. I, She's wearing armor leather clips? armor. All right. We'll yeah. sort this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maris, not preparing your spells. <laughs> Forgetting to put on your clothes. Not remembering <laughs> that you can turn undead. Listen, Maris, she's just she's going through a lot right now. But she's she likes orange juice. Yeah, she's out of orange she juice. She loves orange juice. She likes the vodka and the orange juice. Uh, you will the so the first attack will be seventeen damage. The second one oh my will God. only be four. Twenty one in total. Will only be four. Correct. Twenty one damage. Good gosh. Okay. All right. Um, these three will close in towards Claire and attack with advantage. Come at me. Uh, 22, 12, 11. Uh, first hit, second two don't. Three damage. <laughs> Delightful. Oh, I have advantage. Never mind. You're restrained. Um, so that'll be 20, 17. We'll roll again. Uh doesn't help another 22 for seven points of damage okay so seven plus the three ten damage total gotcha indeed elimus you're restrained correct incorrect oh you made it you made your saving yep, throw 16, i thought i saw five 16 with bless oh wow beautiful and my horse right. rolled a natural 20. nice um for now they're attacking the riders uh, are they? Hmm. All right, I guess they are. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one will split attacks between Elimus and Jaswaldo. 
Um, Elimus, three straight rolls coming at you. Six, nine, and 13. I think all miss. All yeah. miss. Just Waldo. Advantage against you, yes? Restraint? Correct, I am restrained. Uh, 18 hit? Nope. Beautiful. And then I've got... a the, My highest is a 20 on the third. 20 does hit. 20 hits for 90. Wouldn't have hit if I had kept the armor. Oh. She is safe in, Vala in Kresk, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, that hit. All right. My last six attacks. What was the damage? I'm sorry, on that. Um... On that 20, what was the damage? Uh, 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 sorry, uh, 9. Piercing. 9. Not 89. 9. Needles coming at the big guy here. It's split between Maris and the and the, the um, big elk. So, um, Big elk, I have an 18 to hit. And then 2 misses. So That'll do uh, it. 4 damage. Okay. Maris. 13, I have a 20, and then a 6. So the oh 20, my God. I believe, okay, hits. So the 20 hits. 8 piercing damage. Okay. And that's it. Jeswaldo's up. Uh, Jeswaldo will spend his turn attempting to unrestrain himself. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this will be an... Can I use uh, acrobatics? You must make a strength check to do so. Mm. Strength to, to save. use acrobatics, you need Strength feet. check. So no bless. Bless is saves and attacks, right? Yeah, so no bless. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. Fourteen. You are no longer restrained. Aha! Is that my turn? Can I move? You can move. All right, I will... I will leap from my horse... One, two, three, four, five. You know what? I'm not going to move. Um, is this this entangled spell? Does it seem to be ongoing? Is it a, is it a radius that I need to escape? No. Um, you do not feel that starting your turn in the square would make any sort of change. However, it is difficult terrain. Oh, that's good for to know. For um, I will draw a little box here. Um, inside that is difficult terrain. All right. Well, I will one, two, three, four. Move. Up. I don't know where that eleven came from. Did I? I didn't roll that. Never mind. Oh. Uh, it's probably me. Okay, so I will go to the um, to the blights that are attacking from the north mm -hmm. east there, and I will attack with my rapier. You uh, the you had to use your action to try to escape. Oh right. Well, I'll stand there anyway. Okay, I'm done. Closing the distance. Very good. Saurif, you're up. Yep. Um, okay, so this is a bit of a s well. Okay, uh, I'm I'm just going to run. Oh boy, I'm gonna have a five. Like fifty feet over here, and ram this guy. And that is what it is called. I will do a ram. Natural nice. Oh, yay. <laughs> Bye. Next turn, 2d6. Oh, that's a Bye. 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 Oh, only half of him is flying. <laughs> and you look down oh, and you see his <laughs> hips and legs bleeding on the ground as his upper torso tumbles Amazing. 35 feet ahead of you into the vineyard. Correct. Uh, Sorry. Um, I messed that up. Um, 33 think... feet. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep, that's it. I did my job. All right. 
back to Claire. Okay, so quick refresher. Restrained means that... Or, so what do I have to do in order to break out of this? You That's have to use your action thing. to attempt to escape. Okay. Um, but does it prevent any, like, spell casting? It does not, but spell attacks or any attack in general will be made at disadvantage. Um, ah, actually, I will. Can I Misty step out of this? Definitely. I'm going to do that. So, yes, I will utilize Misty step to, oh gosh, what just happened to my screen? Oh no. Okay. You see Claire vanish and then reappear. Uh, 30 I feet would... straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would hurt. Um, how far can I get? There? Onto my back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I'll reappear here and start right. wailing on the dudes in front of me with my long sword. Um, cool. Uh, 17 to hit. We'll hit. All right. Uh, to 12 damage. And then one I'll of attack. them crumples under you. Delightful. I'll attack again. Also 17 for nine damage. Ooh. And you're able to kill one more, in fact. Okay. There's a single one now standing there where there were once six. Sweet. And that's my turn. All right. Miris. Okay. So Miris, noticing that she is bleeding, <laughs> is going to cast Cure Wounds on herself mm -hmm. at second level. Did she make her constitution save for Bless? Oh, she needs to make three of them, I think. Good what? call, Jezwell, though. Just roll above a ten. Oh, she's good so far. I can only see two of them, but... Oh, man. Okay. Ah. Uh... Oh, hey, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Look at you. <laughs> nice yeah, she is no. laser focused. That's you what are she is. That orange juice concentrating. <laughs> Why she drinks it, guys? It's a vitamin C. I'm yeah. going to start drinking orange juice. <laughs> Maris winks. Finger guns. And that's so your like action. That. All right. Anything. No, just kidding. <laughs> and you're done. <laughs> um. Finger is guns it... is a bonus action. Just <laughs> yeah. um, what are you doing, Maris? <laughs> um, so, for my own clarification, if I were to cast spiritual weapon, that uh -huh. is if that would that work in the bonus action? It does. That is a Ooh. it is a bonus action to cast that. The only it's... thing you can't do along with that is cast another spell of a spell level. So, if you want to use your action, it would have to be either a weapon attack or a um, or a cantrip. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Then... She, she just cast healing cure wounds, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. So. Oh, so you could not cast spiritual weapon then. <clears throat> okay, so... That's... I, just I misunderstood my own, your um, question. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, just for my own clarification. So, like... In order to do that, I would have to like do an armor, like um, an armed attack first, right? Nope. Um, no. Bonus actions. There's there, some of them have um, qualifiers. So if you do this, then you can use a bonus action. Spiritual weapon is always an option for you as a bonus action. But okay. by casting cure wounds, you cannot cast another leveled spell along with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I get it. Okay. Cool, cool, then that is my turn. I passed right. Arif. That's my bonus action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like that. And finger guns. All right, uh, Elias, you're up. Um, okay. Um, looking at the battlefield, do I Ooh. feel that? Oh no, they wouldn't have done anything. So this druid that died didn't affect these creatures. That was correct. Uh, I'm going to have to do it again. He will pull out his Pearl of Power and then 
I'll speak the words Ignis Trelebem through that and fire a fireball in the same spot to catch all three again and the guy wow. behind. <clears throat> Excellent cool. use of a pearl of power. 39 oh. damage. That's Wowzers. delicious. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. For DC 16. Alright. Well, the... Wow. Half of these will be killed. None of these can survive. And this guy, let's see. Um, he rolls a 14. You wow. hear terrible screams as he is incinerated Eesh. in your fire. <laughs> Kill count to uh, Elimus's. <laughs> well, this is going up. Ah, uh -huh. This Waldo gives a hoot of victory. Um, and then he will move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to here. All right. I'm assuming the uh, entanglement's gone. But the is. terrain is still there? No, it is a no, concentration it's, spell. Oh, it's, oh, it's a concentration happened. spell. Okay. He disappears. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. It is their turn now. Mm -hmm. Two of them will attack Elimus, and one will attack Claire with this with their um, uh, needle attack. Okay. Elimus, I have a nineteen and a nine towards you. Um, the nineteen would hit usually, but with the pearl of power in his hand, he's obviously looking around and sees them coming. And then we'll say Clippius as the as a pearl of power, a shield comes out. Cool. And that will right. obviously with mage armor and shield. That should be give me like what's mage armor give you? Four? Five? Gives you four. It's four. It's thir it gives it sets it to thirteen it's, it plus dex. It gives you thirteen plus your dex modifier. Oh that's right. That's a different edition of D and D oh, that gives you <laughs> Yeah. Okay, right. so thirteen plus my dex. <laughs> Okay, so I've already got armor class 13, so what, what would that give me? Your, what is your dex modifier? Plus three. So you have 16. So you have 16 and shield brings you to <clears throat> 21. 21, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. They deflect off of your shield. Some needles come towards Claire at 11. And then the one in front of her tries to claw her at 18. Not quite. Not quite. Yeah. And deflect off the armor and shield, splintering and scattering about. <laughs> this one will come forward. Jeswaldo is the obvious target for some needles. Ha <laughs> ha. 15, 18, and 21. At 21 hits. For nine piercing damage. Ouch. And the rest will claw at 9, 12, and 13. Unable to find purchase in the, in the flesh of the dancing rogue. Whose turn? It now is. Jeswaldo will stab at the blights in front of him with his silver drapier. Mm -hmm. Come along. Roll 20. Not roll 20. Hitting AC 25. Doing Super effective. 25 points of damage. Ooh, okay. You see one shatter and crumple once you stab it as if you have not stabbed the creature itself, but you have disrupted the energy holding it together, and it simply falls apart in front of you. And he will... One, two, three, four, five, six. He will go under the hooves, kind of around where Sariv is, uh, trying to get some cover, maybe. Okay, understood. <laughs> and that is his turn. Okay. Speaking of, Sariv, it's your turn. Alrighty. 
I will immediately abandon Giswaldo. Uh, it, it, <sighs> he is he is the strongest warrior. Well, I am, but uh, uh, let's see. Actually, well, I can't really charge this one, but I'll get to there anyway, and just do a attack with my hooves. I'm gonna hoof it over there. I did hoof it over there. <laughs> Net oh, 20. Oh, oh, whoa! What? Yeah. Ooh. This elk oh, is God, doing God, so God. good. Uh, elk, it's a, this is a show oh. about Alimus and the elk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's 32 damage to one of these one little of guys. One completely <laughs> crushed. Flattened. You find it on the, you hit it on the forehead and you just plant it in the ground. You're like, I see you twigs, your roots now. <laughs> just go down. We'll scrape the bits out of your, your hooves later. Yes, please, thank you. Roots should be in the ground. Whack. <laughs> All right. Uh, There's one left. That's it. All right. Claire. Claire. It me. Um, if I have a double attack, I can attack and then move and then attack. Correct. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so I will swing at the the little guys right in front of me. Swing at my long sword. Hopefully, I'll hit them. Wow. This is yeah. There's so many natural twenties this game, guys. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. I crit you guys three times, and I felt really bad. And Revenge. Right back. Yeah. It is a crit storm. Yeah. Uh, um, it's the orange juice. I I didn't drink any orange juice. I don't know. It's saloon going. for you. It's. Orange okay. juice for everyone else. <laughs> this one shatters under your sword. Delightful. So he's gone, and I will take a, a little stroll over towards this fellow over here. Mm -hmm. and there are three left that you charge this towards. This collective yeah. fellow. Um, They're all individuals. Me. I. Uh, yes, we're all I individuals. Rolled an 11. I'm not! Bless. <laughs> Bless. My luck has turned. I rolled an 11. Bless. 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 Oh! I, unbelievably, oh Bless is still up as Maris is like the uh, saving for a champ over here. She is pretty freaking great. Um, so it doesn't matter what you roll. So it will hit 14. With bless. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> lovely. 10 damage. Mm -hmm. One shatters, and you are left with a pair next Love to that. you. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh he got squished. squished. <laughs> Maris, you're up. Okay. Just while I was standing there, he's got blood pouring from all sorts of like thorns sticking out of his cheeks, out of his neck, out of you his arms. You just mowed a yellow jacket nest. <laughs> ah. <sighs> it stings a little. <laughs> Maris is wondering if that's a hint, if just Waldo feels like he needs assistance. I, I, you know. <laughs> okay, so Maris will cast some cutie cure wounds <laughs> on just Waldo for his bleeding face. Thank you. You're can, you uh, can you reach him? Can I reach him? You might need to hop off of... I mean, oh no, I don't know about mounting that. a, a <laughs> huge oh, I, creature I, is a little weird. I understand if it's if it's too much trouble, that's fine. Oh, it's fine, it's <laughs> fine, it's fine. She comes over. Okay, right. thank you. She puts her hand up and gently strokes the side of his face. You are the best. You're amazing. And casts Ooh. cure wounds. How do like that orange juice? All right, um, <laughs> gotta stop. I know <laughs> it's you, fun for that. Can't be right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, I will. My bad. Okay, here you go. That's better. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, and then do I still need to do those saving throws? Nope. You didn't. Nope. You weren't damaged, so it doesn't. You do oh, not. perfect. Great. Some of the thorns like <laughs> come out of his face. <laughs> there right. you go, buddy. Uh, for my movement, can I hop up, back up? <laughs> that would take your entire turn of movement because well actually you probably could because you just hopped off and I, he is adjacent I touch to many that squares. Square. <laughs> I touch many squares. Yeah, she puts <laughs> her arm up, <laughs> grabs a hold of the floor. But I I remember this happening once before. You can only do one of them per turn. 
You can only oh, mount no. or dismount per turn. So Dang it, Paul. I remember stuff about mounted combat. <laughs> Something that never happens, but it's <laughs> I have for years wanted to have a combo of two characters. One's a moon druid and one does mounted combat. So instead, she just pat sorry. <laughs> mm. So, for all you that are listening, Kyle's living the dream right now. See the joy in his face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, cool. Elimus, you're up. I'm ready already. Um, okay. And the one next to Claire. Uh, 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 no, he's, she's got that covered. He'll point at this one here. Yeah. And um, a, a beam of cold with a Gelu Somnus will come out. Muted. Hey guys, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm having a massive, uh, severe weather warning thing slash tornado warning here. So I need to relocate. Um, like, bye. Right now. <laughs> go, 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 go. So, go. Bye. We. <laughs> yeah. Uh, get him, Claire. Get this call? Yeah. Get uh, him. How do I leave? Claire? How do I get out of the call? <laughs> you just you, you can leave leave the call open if you like. Okay, but uh, just end okay. your video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Stop Peace. your video. Yeah. There you go. Uh oh. That's I know. Uh, that's oh, cool. I shouldn't have asked her to do that, but no. uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, she's um, still on the call. <laughs> I'll, I'll mute her. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Uh, yeah. Give us something for a ray of frost. On the creature at the top for 15. Will definitely hit, yeah. Um, for 10 wow. cold damage. Nice damage there. I didn't know if it would end up um, getting one, but yes, one you see freezes over, becomes brittle, and it seems to try to fight through this damage, but as it takes a step, the brittle rest of its body seems to break and shatter into two and you see two pieces fall bisected by your spell t1000 get squishy nice, yeah. and i'll move back this one also got squished into two all right a few things left two hmm let's see we do not have claire it's feels unfair to attack her while a tornado is attacking her. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll move past and attack Elimus. Uh, with 7 and 17 to hit. Does she get an attack of opportunity? Well, <laughs> she, she it depends on how we're going to do this, because you guys are close to the end of this here. Um, Whatever ends it faster. How's that? <laughs> All right. Um, I can pull up Claire's. Just roll a d20, and you'll know yeah. if it hits on. If you no, roll a boat, we don't if have roll to do that. I can pull up her character <clears throat> sheet, because I'm the DM. Um, she, yeah, let's have her make a longsword attack. I don't think either of those would have hit her anyway. 17 to hit for 12 slashing damage. Indeed. One, the first one dies. And the second one attacks you. We'll re-roll it just to be fair. At a 16. Yes. Yes. Seven points of piercing damage. I thought we were friends. <laughs> um, and this big giant target, big elk, 18 and uh, 12. 18 hits. 10 points of piercing damage. Okay. And that will be them as they mindlessly shoot their needles at you. But we are back to Jesualdo. Just a second too late, Jesualdo says, Elimus, look out! <laughs> and runs forward and stabs it. Hitting AC 16. 
doing 28 points of damage. That's... Sorry, I was... That, yeah, it... That's, um, a, that's... that's That was... That's its reaction to you. It doesn't get to react as you... Um, uh, one swipe and you go, did it hit? And then it just... Yeah, it teeters over. And you think for a second, you're like, ooh, I could count the rings in that and find out how old that tree was as it falls. It's <laughs> such a clean cut. But I continue moving over to here to protect Claire, who seems to have gotten something stuck in her eye. Got it. <laughs> Saurev. Uh, the hooves. Again. <laughs> Who uh, 17 they? to hit. Mm -hmm. damage. It is crushed beneath your feet. That's correct. And I'll just move over here. Cool. And that'll be it. All right. Claire will move forward and make her pair of attacks. Let's see. We've got a... <laughs> DM, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Natural we've, been, we've been doing so well on the rolls. <laughs> what wow. is this? I call uh, shenanigans. <laughs> a natural... Okay. <laughs> okay, bless. Roll the bless. She has got bless. Yeah. All cool. right. Um. Uh. 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 Yeah. Go oh, that hits. That yeah. hits. <laughs> That's awesome. Um. And oh, the nine. Well. Unfortunately, one will be quite damaged, but seven isn't quite enough to end one of them, mm. which feels bad. But it's... This was the most pathetic term we've had so far. I know. <laughs> By far. I feel pretty bad about that. <laughs> I just don't know. I mean, do you? you? Know, I'm doing a poor job of representing. <laughs> right, who, who, could, who, could, who could be in that, those shoes? I, I can't. Um, Maris, you're up. Okay, um, I, where, beep, 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 boop, bop, uh, yep, yep, that's it, there You're it a is. warforged now. <laughs> so I look over at, my goodness, Alana. Atu, <laughs> beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, um, so I look over at Alimus and just check to make sure that he's okay, yeah, you good? Okay, great, so now Maris is excited to actually cast, some, like, Spells, man. Like she's probably don't need to, unless it's a cantrip. <laughs> no, I want to like set things on fire. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, what you want? Denied. Whatever. Do what you want. Do whatever you want. <laughs> oh my god! I just wanted to be in the combat for once, Jeswaldo. <laughs> Clerics. Cast uh, fireball. Yes, I would like to cast fireball. <laughs> <laughs> You do have, um... Really? I count a spell. <laughs> <laughs> do you have uh, Sacred Flame? Can you cast Fireball? Can you uh, sacred cast flame? Fireball? I what? think you're out of counter spells. Sacred Flame. No, I don't have it. Well, so the only thing about Fireball is that... It would hit all of us. It would probably hit your allies. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be bad. Is it worth well, it wouldn't hit me and you, so yeah, whatever, go for it. Yeah, why not? I'd probably be alright. <laughs> <laughs> you really have fireball as a cleric. Um, She's a light cleric, I light think. Light cleric. Yeah. Uh, well, then can I instead do Scorching Ray? Yes. Dope. <laughs> okay, then I will do Scorching Ray. I just wanted to catch some stuff on fire, you guys. <laughs> like. Oh, there'll be, there'll be opportunities. Well, I'm taking one now. <laughs> Should have done that first thing. She was keeping you guys alive. Yeah, I was trying to be She healed nice. herself first round, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's uh, fair. I, I did realize, notice that. I, I didn't want it. Well, because if I am not able to heal Sure. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, no. Well, yeah. Guys, be... Who heals the healers? <laughs> I do. Yeah, the other, the other who healer. Heals the... Or I put a, I slap some mud on them and give them two hours and they're fine. Yeah. All right. 
Go ahead and roll your scorching ray. Oh, I oh have. she did. There's one that will uh, that will be enough to kill the one that was damaged, and you get a, you get another two rays. I do. I don't think you did. You mean to cast it at fourth level? Um, I did not. <laughs> also, you're not level seven. You shouldn't have fourth level <laughs> slots. <laughs> I thought you leveled up. Was no. that a joke? No. We joke about it every time. <laughs> have you? I saw that a while ago. Have you actually leveled up? Liz. She's level seven. <laughs> oh no! You're the best, <laughs> best cleric oh, ever. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a joke. Y'all, we're gonna die. Oh my gosh! Calm down, sir. Strahd um, saw that. All right. Um, <laughs> oh go ahead and God. roll your next beam. <laughs> Okay, well, can I? Because I don't have a first it's, level it's, spell. It's three beams at second level, which is yeah. the <laughs> lowest level you can cast it. So. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. So go ahead and just click it two more times. Yeah. Does a fourth level Scorching Ray have the potential to do more damage than a Fireball? Mm, yeah. I don't... Probably say. Yes, because it oh. can crit. That's right. Okay. Ten yes, fire did. for but the next one. But it didn't. <laughs> Ten fire for the next one. Indeed, and that will end this combat as Maris has fire erupt from her hands to just be like, "All right, we're done," and <laughs> and we, just, look, uh, we think the remaining the... ones. Well, how do you have wow. so much power? Because <laughs> Waldo like sort of sits there like panting, he's like that was amazing. You are um, the most powerful magic users I have ever encountered. Don't tell Elibus. <laughs> well, no, I was saying as a group. I mean, I thought we were dead. They came over the hill. So many of them. And then gone. Amazing. We're invincible. I'm so happy. I wouldn't say invincible. What would you say? <laughs> Lucky. That's... It's kind of like Invincible. I'm going to go over and start um, uh, searching the bodies of the druids. All right. I start munching on the other little creatures that attacked us. Anything okay. tastes good? Uh, <laughs> yes. It's a moss. Go ahead and make an investigation check. As a Waldo. lizard man, as a lizard man, or as an elk, you're just obsessed with eating the things we kill. Look. Wait, not one where I come from, you you don't waste food. I uh, roll a fifteen. I will go to investigate as well. Okay. For a twenty-one. Jesus. You find um, they carry almost nothing except a few what appears to be a pouch and spell components, ragged animal hide clothes. You see that as they're lying here with their mouths lying open. Their teeth have rotted away, much of them. It's like baked bean teeth, if you've ever seen those like oh. little brown nubs, you know what I mean? And, oh. uh, um, <laughs> and uh, they carry their staves, which are staves, which oh, are just yeah. um, sort of gnarled pieces of wood, oh. occasional vines um, wrapping around them. But that's about all they, all they carry on them. I, I once knew I, this fellow who could speak with the dead. Can anyone here do that? It sounds like you were starting a rhyme. I'm just gonna. Say. <laughs> yeah, I want to know I was, where that goes. That <laughs> I was expecting a limerick. I once knew a fellow who could speak with the dead. He told me that all he needed was a head that had too many syllables. Oh, I looked at Maris. I can't think of a rhyme for that word, and the limerick is over. Well, Maris is seventh <laughs> level. Can you speak? Uh, <laughs> can you do speak with this? <laughs> it says, uh, "Do whatever you want." I'm just ahead. Anyway, um, <laughs> I know that's not the line. Anywho, um, it is quiet, and just down the road from you, you see now a um, a small outcropping of trees, and there seems to be movement coming from there. You're on your guard for a moment, but then you notice a figure in a cloak there that is beckoning towards you. I cast well, my last fireball. Okay, we, he we head over. Do we? Okay. Yeah. 
All right. I turned back into a lizard. So I was almost dead in that form anyway. Got it. Okay. I, rum it. I do. I do rum it. I pillage their spell components and replenish my little spell pack because I use the same things. Noted. As you make your way there, you see. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, a few people in cloaks, and you also see there are ravens perched in the trees, maybe four or five, looking down at you, cocking their heads. Walking forward, you see this man. But hello. That's good work you've done. Well done. Oh, he's definitely evil. <laughs> Maris, uh, well, thank are you, you uh, evil? <laughs> <laughs> she, did, she didn't mean that. We've been fighting the back as much as we're able, but that was just a few too many, and we've become quite weak. Name is Davian Martikoff. I am Jesualdo Tocarembo, La Tomba del Fuego, Santa Maliba, Zacatega, the Jote de Santa Cruz de la Rosa, at your service. <clears throat> ah, the one of many names. This is must be the me. lizard and the mage and hmm, the holy one. I heard there are more of you. Where are the rest? Fallen into shadow. No, that's not true. They're not dead. Um, we, uh... How have you heard of us anyway? Yeah. My brother's been watching you. Ah. Excuse me, my son. Ah. The up there. The, the ravens? Yes. Okay. okay. So... My apologies. His name is Urwin Martikov, and his son is Davian. Wait. My God. What is happening tonight, guys? I'm sorry. <laughs> his name is Davian. His son is Urwin, who you have met in Valaki, the first owner of the Davian. Blue Water Inn. Yeah, just first time ever. <laughs> My first session ever. <laughs> I don't know. What is this? What is this book? <laughs> All right. Names aren't important in D&D. &D. No, not at all. <laughs> and the note taker isn't here, so I, I could just call him whatever yeah. I want. That's right. You guys you're absolutely know. correct. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who's going to tell you you're wrong? This information is not happening because we have no <laughs> note taker. No one's taking it down, so. All right, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll take Davian it down. Markikoff. I got it. Mm. You, Older your son gentleman owns with all white hair. <laughs> We're not on very good terms, but he has sent word of you. Quite the shake-up you're planning, at least. Anyway, I thank you for what you've done, but for now the job is only half finished. The druids and those things they've summoned up from the plants, they've overrun the vineyard. How many more are there? Well, the bulk of them you've taken down, but there was at least one larger one that they were piecing together inside. And, well, one of the druids carried a terrible looking staff. Hmm. What? What is Saurive's expression i know uh he doesn't have like eyebrows going on so he can't really express himself in that way so he's, he's <laughs> but always he's definitely attentive a <laughs> couple of licks well how is everyone feeling i could do with a rest tell me we're here for the wine out to the village the town wherever it is Kresk. Kresk. A shipment was meant there for a week ago. 
Yes, it's still in the docks. But with this attack, we've been unable to send it. You're more than welcome to take that and the rest of the barrels we have if you will just liberate our home we'll happily do from so. these things. We'll happily do so. We'll join you once you've done. We've suffered losses if you need to rest for a moment. We do. Do you have food? We'll try to water? watch for you. We have some. And we'll watch for you. Come into the grove. And you see there is just a small grove that you could go into the center of. When he, he whistles into the air and you see a couple ravens float by. You also see some humanoid figures um, come out. Um, holding what seem to be bundles. You see um, a young man, a young woman, another young man suddenly <laughs> appear um, from the forms of these ravens. There's a puff of feathers, and you suddenly see their naked bodies for just a moment standing there. And then their compatriots wrap a cloak around them, hand them a bow, a quiver. They sort of cinch these cloaks around themselves to cover their forms. <clears throat> And then the ones that have handed them this equipment whoosh, suddenly shift. Their clothes fall limp on the ground and then flying up from their forms, you see ravens ascending into the trees as if there's a shifting of the guard. I wonder if I wonder if the one you ate, Sarif, was, was one of their friends. Tasted like a regular bird. Would, would you have known the difference? Unlikely. That's what I thought. <laughs> okay, we rest. Do a short rest. They will. They will uh, provide you guys the safety to have a short rest. Yes. I will use my arcane, whatever it's called, recovery. Yep. Oh, I have no wild shapes left, so that's good. So I'm only a full seven. And I will get back my one of my slots. And how do we heal from that? We'd have to expend something here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, hit dice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll spend two. Ouch. Ouch. Seven. I think that's how much damage I took. Yes. Right, I'm back to full. Just wonder we'll start looking around to see if there's anything you can use to also have some sort of a fire attack. Lantern. Any sort of oil. Torches. Um... Uh, lantern, you could ask them if they would provide you with. Uh, one of them has a lantern. Well, uh, well, I'm really more interested in the oil. Do you have anything that I could use to create some sort of weapon that does uh, damage, like it could cause a fire? It was so effective. Did you see what the mage did? Amazing. <clears throat> uh, they will. Uh, one of them will offer you the, to take the oil from the lantern, but Hmm, that's about oh, it. They it's better know. than nothing. Do you have any torches by any chance? They do not. They just have hmm. the lamp, the single lantern. Do you have any pieces of wood with which I could make a torch? You're standing in a grove, so you can make All a right, So I pick up a piece of okay. wood <laughs> and I douse it with, with oil okay. and I make a torch. Right. During your long rest, you can make a makeshift torch, we'll call Short it. Short rest. Oh, uh, yes. Excuse me. Um, you want to call this a club attack? Yeah, so... A club... Yeah, a d6. Can I help him? Uh, I, in case it matters, can I help him? Just because I'm, I actually have the ability to like make clubs and stuff. Yeah, how, how long does it take you to do so? During a short rest, I can do okay. that. Okay, I was going to say, because it would, even though a club and a stick seem very similar, it would, yeah, there's, there's a small distinction. So, Sarif will help you bind it well and create a good grip. It feels 
Cool. So like I've got a, like a I've got solid like a, cudgel. A cudgel yeah. that I can use as a torch. We'll say yes. All right. I mean, I could just use the rapier too. I mean, it doesn't not it does a lot of damage. <laughs> Maybe it will scare them. Mm -hmm. All right. How do we want to proceed here? So, do we know where they are? Precisely. Many of them have gone inside the winery itself. Is there a back door or a window or anything like that? There is a loading dock. There's a main door past the presses. And yes, there is a back door with the bottling room and the stairs down to the cellar. Mm. Well, I think back door. I, think I could door. scout ahead. Yeah. Sorry, if you want to come. Yes. Okay, the rest of us will follow probably about mm -hmm. 30, 40 foot behind. You want to do like a pass out of the trace and all that fun stuff? Yep. Cool. Yep. I'll cast uh, pass out of the trace. Um, I'm not going to turn on anything. Okay. I have pretty good stealth anyway, so. So we'll go stealthing up to the winery, creep all around the back. Okay. And um, so this, I door. will just give you, uh, I'm going to pull you guys over to the sort of a little map of the winery here. Um, <laughs> if you scroll down, you can see that approaching it, there is, are you on the same page now? Yes. Okay. Here are the presses and there seems to be a large door here. There is a door here. There is an area which appears to be a loading dock that has a second floor and windows up here. This is all two story actually. So, um there's a I guess you wouldn't really be able to see the second floor, but anyway, there is a loading dock here, like I said, uh with barrels of wine in a wagon. Um, he pointed out a door back here, and then he mentioned this door here. You can also see slightly ajar. There is one in this location as well. All right, is there a way? I guess we'll just go around the back then. Yeah, around the ready? back. Ready? Everyone ready? Okay. So, Sarib and I will creep around to the back door. Okay, go ahead and make a, a stealth check. You do get a bonus for it, but still roll it. Is that all of us, yeah? All of mm -hmm. us. So I rolled a 27 without the pass without a trace. So we've got 37, a 16, a 17, and a 24. Got it. Is it plus 10, I take it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so 16 mm -hmm. for me then. Um, even the um, Elimus, when you suddenly... The, the smoke and stuff around from your fireball seems to have caught in your throat and you try and suppress it. You can't help but cough a few times. Your throat getting the best of you. You life. sounds <laughs> like it. <laughs> it sounds like it barely makes a sound. It's muted even to your own ears by the magic. And you feel unheard, unseen. But so I guess we can come by this we could go by this door that's ajar and do a listen. Is Claire coming with? She is not. Are we... Okay. Okay. Sure. She's staying and helping um, a couple of the wounded were ravens. Sure. <clears throat> uh, did did no one notice Sarif sir? Stealth stealth check. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunately still yours. the thing about like. <laughs> Natural ones are an automatic miss on attack rolls. However, they don't. Uh, a natural one can still be a success on a skill check. Did you so. cast pass without trace of yourself, there, Kyle? Yeah. Did you yeah. fix I everybody? Thought, fix everybody. Yeah. Everyone within thirty feet of me. Oh, I thought you did do it on you because you said, "Oh, I'm, right. I'm good at stealth, so don't want stealth to worry about that." <laughs> now, that now, would have been was, really funny. I was debating like turning into a mouse and. Just all this pocket or something, yeah. like we would do for a heist. But we're gonna go into I a fight. I just wanted so. to call you out because I thought 
that was such a cocky <laughs> comment. I know, I, mean, I, know. Not <laughs> one. I know, but it still came out to a 17, so I have a plus six. Yeah, that, yeah. Yep, yep, absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> Sauri and I will do perception checks at the door. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Four. Thirteen. Um, you hear what sounds to be mumbling coming from inside. I didn't hear anything. Did you hear anything? Nothing of note. Okay, we'll keep going. We'll creep around to the back. Do I hear anything with my passive? Perception. Yes, you hear a. Kind of like a chanting type of mumbling sound. I know that the others. What do you mean you cannot hear that? Are you deaf? Shh, we're being quiet. Shut up. Someone's chanting inside. Possibly cast in a spell. Oh, let's yes. sneak around the back. Carry on sneaky around the back. <laughs> Come, Maurice. Yes. You're okay over here. Yeah, you gotta kind of yeah. stay close to me yeah. a little bit. <clears throat> All right. So you do find a door back here that next to the um, sort of turret back there. Do another perception check, if I may. Okay. You may. Three. Um, Silence. <laughs> I think this was a good idea. <laughs> oh my god. Ten. <laughs> All right. Again, do Sorry. I hear something? Um, out here? No, you can't really hear anything. It seems to have gone silent. I'll right, check the door. Is the door open? Um... Yes, if you prod it, yeah, it seems to be open. Okay. Everyone ready? I've got my cudgel. Open the door. All right. You see what seems to be a glass blower's workshop here. How on earth would I know that? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> All the glass bottles? I don't know. Mm-hmm. There are, uh, Wine bottles, setting, um, sort of uh, setting to their form here. Let's see. Oh, it, we have Claire back. Oh, just, she popped Yay! in. <laughs> Your apartment's still there, Claire. Oh well, she'll catch up. Yes. <laughs> Um, and uh, you see there's a um, hearth and a barrel of sand over here. There is a staircase also that descends underground and a rack of bottles. Hmm. Oh, she's saying something. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. You're back. Hey, you're alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Can I start my video? Yeah. Please do. Yay. Hi. Hey. You didn't even lose power. No, I didn't. It was a small miracle. Excelente. Okay, what did I miss? You got you were taking care of some uh, ravens for a minute, but uh, okay, you met some uh, some were ravens. It turns the... out that the the guy who runs this winery is the father of the were raven who uh, runs the Blue Water Inn. His name That's is Davian Martikov. Okay, so I had to take notes while you were gone. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And he that did must so have been well. really painful. <laughs> Bravo. I, I take good notes. I am the note that not this game. Jaswaldo is Jaswaldo doesn't care about notes. Um <laughs> Oh, I'm tempted to go downstairs first. We hear where the uh, where the chanting's coming from. <clears throat> is it downstairs or through this door? That would require another perception check. What's the potential threat? I believe here? I'll get a good one eventually. Um, 24. Druids, druids and perhaps a large vine construct. Oh, yeah, 24. 
Yes, you hear the sound of chanting. All right, I stick my head back outside and I say, From behind the door. Okay. We know where they are. I think we could just open the door and unload. Does anybody have another one of those amazing spells? There might be innocence in there. Well, they would have told us about that at the... Wouldn't they? They would have mentioned that. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, if I cast I a fireball in some, there, it would I just remembered something very important about the last time we did fire in a building. Yes. It caught on fire, right, right, right. Yes. Right. <laughs> Pesky fire. Well, we could still run in and surprise them. We could. So is everyone ready? Sorry, I was staring intently at the door, making hey. sure he knows maybe how to open it. Maris, can, can you cast, it can you do that blessing thing of Saloon again? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Maris will cast Bless. Blessing thing of Saloon specifically. The blessing thing of Saloon specifically. <laughs> yeah. All right, is everyone ready? Sorry, he opens the door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just open and we run in. Got it. You open the door and see a large room with barrels and a couple large fooders, I believe they're called. Oh my goodness. Say that um, again. What is it? Uh, fooder. <laughs> F O E D E R. Um, I love their wings. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The rich smell of fermenting wine fills this large two-story chamber, which is dominated by four enormous wooden casks, each one eight feet wide and 12 feet tall. There's a wooden staircase here in the center leading up to a um, second floor, which you can't quite see directly above you yet. Um, stacked against the wall are a number of barrels with Wizard of Wines burned into their sides. Um, there is a small balcony over your head and stairs climb higher to doors on either side ahead of you to the right and left. If you guys know, I've revealed some areas up above you, which is essentially one floor up, if that makes sense. The chanting stops. Um, and you hear um, the uh, sound of a human voice saying, Ready yourselves! Unleash! We didn't surprise him? <laughs> we were so stealthy. We were we so were stealthy. So stealthy. Um, Was I stealthy? We're assuming you were. <laughs> I mean, it's cool if we didn't, but... Um, <laughs> so... I don't believe it. Um, 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 um. All right. So, that I, I guess I, I said that a bit in a way not intended to. He is yelling commands at the two of them who are there, regardless, trying to, um, it sounds like they are finishing our ritual, essentially. So he's saying, uh, it is not a call to initiative necessarily, but you do oh. hear these voices as the door creeps open. Do I... See them? Kill them. <laughs> you do not. Okay, sorry. I, I don't quite understand the map. Again, how does this work with the two levels or something? So there's a... there are um, Above on the map here, There you can see there's, there's a stairway that leads up to what you must imagine is a landing above your head. So okay. we're below so the, this. Oh, I see. So the barrels. door comes in... Mm -hmm. and that's The door comes in below us. and there is a... Got what, it. The back of some a stairway right here. Okay. And then okay. there is a walkway above. You cannot see the what you are directly underneath. I guess I just start slowly Run in, moving yeah. in and try and find them or see. Where okay, uh, let's repeat stealth checks as you guys slowly <laughs> creep your way in. Don't worry. Oh, oh, but we have uh, we have um, uh, pass without a trace. Up. <gasps> we do. That's so yes. exciting. Okay. How we were also stealthy. Oh my gosh, I have a 22. 
I uh, have a good stealth, stealth roll? check. No, 36. 31. Yeah. There was a 16 that you rolled before. But I have disadvantage. That's why I rolled oh, twice. Okay. I'm clanky clanky. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like no one hears you for the moment. There's if you if you look there's little bits of moss on all the gaps in your armor. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> nice. <padding> You've it. <laughs> been meticulous. <laughs> You've grown quiet. All right. Everyone follow Sarif, right? Okay. I'm not sure how this happened, but he'll he'll lead the way. I don't know. Can we see like through here? I guess we're just gonna go around this way. So this or is not, just the, you're, just out in the open now. So right. My so, impression was, in order to see what was above us, we had to get further out. Correct. So yes. Jezwato will sneak uh, out as they all break left. Jezwato will sneak out to the right, trying to keep cover as best he can. Okay. And above you, you see three of these druid creatures. Um, two of them are chanting over these vats. One of them is standing here, and he holds a black gnarled staff in his hands and appears to be barking orders. Um, to the others. All right, I'm going to throw a dagger at the one who is barking the orders. Okay, then we roll initiative. <laughs> yes. <gasps> I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> oh my god. What? Why does it keep rolling my initiative twice? Everything else has been fine. I miss the the combat music. Oh, I got some of that. You have druids in a winery. Uh. <laughs> it's my favorite single. <laughs> <laughs> I got some of this, yeah. How you doing there, Jade? You sleepy? No, it's fine. I'm all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at the map. All right. Thinking how I could make it be fit better on the bloody overlay. Wow, look at you guys. Uh... All right. Just Waldo, you are actually the first to act. Perfect. How fitting. I drop my club. I throw my dagger. I'm hitting AC 17. 6,000 dice show up. <laughs> yeah. Doing 15 points of damage. Ooh, yes. Oh, very nice. And I will... Is there a way that I could use acrobatics to help me get to the top faster than going on the steps? Um, using, the, using the vats, like going do, 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 up between the two vats and then um, leaping? Interesting. So to sort of um, do the step, step, step each side, like as if you're climbing, um, like if you're Jackie parkouring up, yeah. it'll be difficult. But yes, you could try to get on top of this vat here. Which which vat here? Uh, I'm up above, but this on top of this one. This one actually has an open. It's not open to the bottom. It's not open. You, yeah. It has a has You can a lid. see the top on the, the um, if you scroll up and look at the top version up there. I see it. All right. I will do it because why the hell not? That is a 19. <laughs> um, oh, and I'm you... blessed. Oh. Uh, that's for 20. Saves. That's unfortunately that's saving throws and attack rolls. Um, so you oh, are shit. able to um, get your way up you slip just a bit and you're able to grab on though and pull yourself up, but it will take half your movement to do so, to get to on top of this vat. All right, well then I will, once I have used half my movement to get to the top of that vat, I will use the rest of it to, where are the enemies? They're above us. If you scroll up, I they're above see. us. I see, got it. So I will jump from there to the one that I attacked. Okay, got it. And I am done. Sorry if you're up. Um, well, luckily, I just got a 
Good reminder from chat. Thank you, chat. It is kitty time. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast. Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty yeah. time. It's kitty time. Kitty time. I'm I'm going to cast uh, moonbeam. Moonbeam. Uh, yes, on the main guy at second level, third level rather. Okay. Um, so we'll mark that off, and then I'm going to turn into a saber tooth tiger. All right. Um, you will have to displace your allies, which is a little weird since I can, there's not I, a lot I of can, room. I can move up a little bit first. That's fine. Okay. Or, so you're kind of, yeah, we'll be fine there. All right. Anything else? I guess just kind of moving to the bottom of the stairs or something. Uh, will I be able to get past you? <laughs> uh, this got awkward. I'm going to run to Good. the other side of the stairs. I know teamwork. Noted. All right, Claire, you're up. Okay, I think I have just enough movement to get to the bottom portion of the stairs in front of the middle guy. Um, So I will do so. He's basically 10 feet above Alimus right now. Yeah, so I've just moved myself to the same bit where Jezwaldo is, and I'll lay into him with my long sword. Okay. Uh, I can click the right buttons. That's always the question. Uh, oh, well, that, okay, that'll just be both attacks then. So a 15 and a 16. Okay, the 15 will not hit. 16 okay. will. Bless. Okay. Bless. Um, oh, yes, that's true. I can, thank you, Alimus, you're mm. so handy. Uh, that brings that up to a 17 to hit. Uh, so hits. Yeah, both hit lovely. That. Bless his um, clutch yet again. It's so wonderful. Um, and for kicks on the first one, I will expend one of my smites um, to add an additional 2d8 divine damage. So an additional eight damage on top of 20. Ooh, all right. Some real Nova damage here. <laughs> Anything else for Claire? That's it for me. All right, Maris, you're up. Okay, so... There's only that one staircase leading into the fighting space, correct? Correct, to the upper space. You can, if you move to here, you could look up and see them, though. If you. Okay. Because it's, a, it's an open two story room. So if I move to like right behind Claire? Right, yeah. or even or just over there. to here, you could see oh, them. Great. You can cool. cast up. Oh, awesome. They're on like an upper landing above. Spiritual yeah. weapon. <laughs> yeah. So can I cast spiritual weapon? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Dope. Okay. So let's do it. I knew it. We are going to cast. You did know it. <laughs> spiritual weapon. And let me get to the right one. All right. 25 will definitely hit. Yay. For six force. All right. He is getting battered and bloodied for sure. Near death, in fact, it seems. What's casting it at third level do again? Nothing. I think it's just a second. No, it does more damage. It does. You roll more dice. to fourth level. Mm hmm. So you might as well every, oh. two, every two levels. So you might as well cast it, it at first. Yeah. Well, second, Not second. Second, second level. level spot. Oh, I don't have any second level spots left. Oh, been, well, that been... would be a good reason to do it at third. Is it, <laughs> yep. is it a second level spell then? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Elimus, it's your turn. Unless okay. Maris, you would like to do anything else. I don't believe you used an action. So if you would like to use a cantrip or something else, you can. Oh, okay. Does um, casting spiritual weapons? Is it casting spiritual weapon? Attacking with spiritual weapon is a bonus action, yeah. but casting the spell is an action. It's also so a bonus. bonus action. You're kidding me. It's a yeah. great spell. It's, Non-concentration. Yeah. It's broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's how you get... You can move it and attack as a bonus action. <laughs> it's how you keep your damage up as a cleric. Although it can't move as fast as you because it only can move 20 feet around. So, um, so I can cast Sacred Flame on like just one. Yep. 
All right, so I'm going to hit our friendo with Sacred Flame. All right, deck save. I've got a 17 as a result, unfortunately. So he will mm. be able to dive out of the way to avoid the pillar of pain that you summon <laughs> forth. All right. This is now their turn. Um, it is now Elimus's turn. <laughs> um, okay. So we can't see inside the vats, can we not? Nope. Okay, Alimus will step out to here. Okay, can I see this one from here? Mm-hmm. And I'll hit him with a rare frost. You can try to hit him with a rare frost. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, for, yeah. that, for that, I'm going to crit it. Yes. Go Call for it. Shot. Oh. oh. Sorry, I, should, I feel bad now. <laughs> oh. Oh, 14. It will deflect off of his skin against this. It's got this sort of scaly, bark-like quality to it. Damn you. And I'll move a bit further over here. All right. And they are just reacting and panicking at the moment. Which brings us all the way back to Jeswaldo. Jeswaldo will stab with his silver rapier. Surprise rounds are the best. Hitting AC 17. Yes. 16 points of piercing damage. Ooh, and the one oh, with man. the black staff falls. And then he will step towards the one to his right, and that mm -hmm. will be the end of his turn. Okay. Sarif. Just stay there. I've got a feeling something's going to happen. This can't be just it. You're muted. You're muted. Oh. oh, that's fine. I wasn't saying anything useful anyway. Um, I was trying to check if I had a climb speed as a cat, but I do not. Uh, so I'm going to try and like jump kind of up past and get to this guy on the left. If I can mm -hmm. try and like cat, cat robotics it up there. Catapult yourself. Yes. Uh, uh, which one are you trying to get to? The one on the left. The dad jokes are free, y'all. I'm I'm pretty big, so I, f I feel like I I wouldn't try and squeeze by. So I'll like go a little bit up the stairs and then try and get up onto this. Under this one. Under the vat there, yeah. You can probably do that as a saber tooth tiger, yeah. Um, forty speed. I've got eighteen strength for jumping. I don't know. However you want to do it. Um. Go ahead and make a um, athletics check. Eleven. Mm, you will do it, but you will slip, and it will take essentially your whole movement to get to the top of get there. To the top. Okay. Uh, then I will. Just it's a move. cat, you know. It's like, yeah. You know, it can. I've jump. seen that. Yeah. Um, I'll just move the moonbeam, moonbeam over to this guy then. Okay. Sounds good. Did they? Did we kill this guy? Well, whatever. Yeah, yeah. he's dead. Mm -hmm. No, I mean before. I'm trying to think if he would have gotten hit with a moonbeam, but that's that's fine. Whatever. Oh, probably. I, I don't remember the turn order or stuff. Doesn't um. Matter. Yeah, okay. I might have missed I think that. I just one. Got it. Claire. Well, I mean, okay. I missed it. So I will come over to here. Mm -hmm. And try to get a few slashes in with my long sword. Uh, 26 to hit, and the second attack. Hi, <laughs> natural one. Um, so the first one, um, I'll expend another spell slot for um, smite for an additional uh, seven damage, so 15 total on the first hit. Okay. Um, I think that's really all I've got here.
All right. Maris. Okay, so I will do Sacred Flame um, on the one next to Claire. Sky. All right. I have a 12 as a result. Go ahead and roll that damage. <clears throat> <clears throat> Nine. You bathe him in painfully searing light that cries out. You can hear, you can smell the um, leather oh. clothing just burning on him. Uh. And, uh, <laughs> hair, this like mottled uh, hair that just caked with mud and other things just begins to crisp up. Uh. Uh. Spiritual weapon. Yeah, I was about to say, Maris, like, gags a little bit at the smell, and then uses spiritual weapon to try to hit him on the head. <laughs> Alright. Go ahead and roll that attack. Okay. The weapon will impact off of the skin, but again, you will notice it seems to be hardened. But I guess you are still blessed, as Sean is mutedly trying to point out. Uh -huh. Is that... Does that affect the Does that work? Weapon? Oh, wow. Yeah, because she's still making the attack. I think. Yeah. yeah. Roll that d4. I've never thought about it before. And so to do that, we just have this little thingy. Yeah, just, yeah. Here you go. Right. No, that'll that'll get it through then. And this nice. one will be knocked unconscious. Not unconscious. It'll be knocked dead. <laughs> what does your spiritual weapon look like, Maris? Uh, so it looks like a crescent moon. Oh, kind yeah. of like a la Sailor Moon's little tiara. <laughs> like the moon right in the middle. There you go. It's the tiara well, from Sailor Moon. <laughs> and it slices through this uh, druid which falls to the ground singed. Now singed and sliced. Mm. Medium rare. Anyway. Nice. Good job, Maris. Thanks. Elimus, you're up. Um, okay, I will try the same again. For Rare Frost. For 15? I'm sorry, Elimus. The bark skin is just too tough ah, for the spell to penetrate. Damn you. Indeed. That's me. And they come around again, and you hear this one give it the last breath of its incantation. And as some as you, I think, were expecting, this vat explodes. And inside is a large, blight like creature covered oh. in spines. Similar to one that you saw before, but this time, even more um even pokier i guess you would say um like a like a porcupine like a like a rose bush without the blossoms and it emerges covered in red wine looking about and will look hmm, what is nearby and what can he reach He has a 10-foot reach, so he will stagger to hear what? I was going to say, I think for the record, um, Alimus and... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It just it wasn't clear where you guys were in relationship to one oh, another. Oh, got it. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, it will use a raking vine, a pair of raking vine attacks at you, Jeswaldo, attacking the one that just summoned it. Right. Um, first one will be at 11. The second cool. will be at 20. Uh, 20 hits. Um, that is 10 piercing damage. And you are 
grappled. All right. As it's a long vine-like, um, well, vine, <laughs> vine-like arm reaches out and wraps around you. And you can feel a hundred piercing um, needles sink into your flesh. Ouch. When this happens, you will also hear as this door <clears throat> flies open here. And you see another one on the landing here which comes and seems to yell um, about uh, in a... Did anyone speak um, Sylvan? Oh, do I? You did as a I giant do. elk. I do. Yeah, oh. that's right. As a giant elk, but do you no, as, I do. Do you as normal? Sorry yeah, okay. does. Yeah, uh, you, will, you will yell um, something along the lines of um, they've they've felled the master or something like that and will call out in anger and then look at you claire and will summon forth a ball of flame in his hand and will throw it at you all righty um with a nine not super awesome yeah, I'll just You will then see the these tangled looking creatures approach oh. that look like this come behind him. These are also plant creatures, but they look like balls of yarn almost. Um where the others were twigs and logs and different parts of a plant like branching plants stuck together. These appear to be just made entirely from vines wound around over and over and over again. And one of them extends its uh, vines down towards, off this balcony, down towards Elimus. Uh, so the 21 to hit. Yeah. It will do five bludgeoning damage as these impact you, and they will wrap around you. You will be grappled and restrained by it. One will also reach and try to do the same thing to Maris. With a 15 to hit, armor class is 15 yeah okay you take uh nine points of bludgeoning damage you are also grappled and restrained okay. just waldo at the beginning of your turn the vines constrict and you take 11 piercing damage uh oh that's gonna be a problem Uh oh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> um. So to escape the grapple would be my attack, correct? It's a no. Well. It's, it uses an action. This is not a strength specified one, though, like the one oh, before. Okay. It is a regular grapple, but also imparts the restrained condition. So you can use acrobatics or athletics to acrobatics attempt to escape. Okay. However, you are you are not with you are not restrained though. Um, okay, so I could attack. Just a painful grapple. You could, yes. I will do that. I will attack. with my silver drapier. Hitting AC 24, doing 23 points of Ooh, piercing damage. That's a lot of damage. Almost um, you run through what you imagine must be a vital organ in its stomach. And it, it topples over, but is barely standing, clutching its stomach, holding its staff, looking at you with defiant eyes over bushy, bushy eyebrows. Um, and I wish I had another attack, but I sure don't, so I'm done. That buckler. <laughs> um, Sariv, your turn. Right. Uh, they keep killing I, the things you moonbeam. I know, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to throw the moonbeam on the... Why do I kill everything I moonbeam? <laughs> 
I'm just going to throw the moonbeam on the big guy because he's probably going to be sitting there. Um, and then I'm... Oh, shit, that's my action, isn't was it? Was there some indication? I mean, I didn't realize he was moonbeamed. Uh, well, Claire did it. Okay. Yeah, sorry. It was the main guy, and then I went to the left, so like... Got whatever. it. Just we'll come up with a icon or something. Moonbeam yeah. icon, yeah. Um, and then... Can I just jump across to the next vat so I'm by these guys? Um... Like that? Yes, you can okay. do that. Um, and I'll uh, attack whichever one is grappling Maris if I can. Okay, that would be the one on the the one further down on the screen. The middle one. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will attack that one with my claws. Apparently, bites a little anemic. Yeah, Sabretooth bites are punks. Ooh, yeah, anyway. it does a d10 instead of 2d6 for uh, for the claws. Yeah. Uh, 17 to hit for 10 damage. Yes, all right. Slashing. You rake across it, and it does deal a nice chunk of damage. They're still hanging out, though. Wait, no. Uh, Moonbeam takes an action. Sorry. Sorry. Take that off. Don't okay. Attack. Ignore the attack. Okay. No cheating. So right. who did you... Mo oh, I see the moon. <laughs> Who'd you moon? All right. <laughs> the big guy. All right. Uh, that's it then. That's it. Claire, you're up. All right. I will step over the body of the crispy druid. Mm -hmm. And um, as I step forward, I will utilize Hexblade's curse on this uh, druid in front of me who has just appeared as a bonus action. Um, and then I will attack with my longsword a couple times. First attack coming in at a 15 with a bless question mark. Is that still up or did Maris have to do a thing to keep Maris, you please roll a concentration a saving throw or a oh, yeah. constitution saving throw. Bless Delightful. is still active. So 16 to hit. <laughs> that will do it. Delightful. Um... So that will be, um, how much extra damage do I do here? Um, Hexblade's Curse is plus three to damage rolls. So that is 13 damage on the first hit. All right. Um, following up with another swipe on the long sword. Um, I will <laughs> roll. Again, we'll do it, yeah. Yep. Um, so then another um, 11 damage. All right. Yes. It's looking it. bad for this Do one. it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for Claire the Paladin? I will give it a menacing look. All right. And hope that he, it pees its pants. <laughs> it um, it uh, gives you a menacing look right back and between rotten teeth you see black ichor type of blood drip over its lip and it <laughs> spits it in your face mm. that that's not good germ protocol mm -mm. Yeah. come on maris you're up is he not wearing a mask okay well, no, i think she's not. immune to disease yes so, that's actually a good point given that i am both grappled and What's the other one? Restraint. Um, can I make any attack, or do you I? You can, to... but it will be at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, I will try to use the sacred flame cantrip on the biggie downstairs. On the biggie. All right. Mm -hmm. Mister, you're not very. Good. <laughs> I have a one for my save. Oh. So, you will that gladly take that damage. Three, three radiant damage begins mm -hmm. to burn away a bit of his needles. All right. Anything else? 
Uh, is there a point in trying to use my? You can use weapon? your okay. spiritual weapon to try to move and attack. Awesome. I don't think it can get. To I don't. The... I think you're a little far away. Yeah, from from the downstairs guy. Yeah. You should okay. attack the guy that's like right next to it. Yeah, you're yeah, so you're five I... feet too far, so you can okay. attack the one next to you or the one that's almost dead that Elena attacked too. Um, I will attack the one next to me. Okay, so that one, the one right above you. Yeah. Okay. And also at disadvantage, correct? Technically, yes. Go ahead and roll that bless. See what happens you hit oh great yeah hot stuff first nice. damage roll eight force damage not bad 13 hit yeah did nice on the viney boys wow. mm -hmm. anything else turn. maris nope effective turn elimus you're up now you are restrained. He will look very aggro. aggro ag ag whatever, he'll look pissed off. And he'll turn around, <laughs> put his fingers, to, uh, he's obviously hanging together as a fan, and look towards him. And will speak the words. Estuan's manas. And extreme force will come out for a burning hand at third level. I suppose you could arc this over Maris's head yeah, in order to get up. them, because they're, yeah, you know, ten, fifteen feet above you. So. Yeah, I'm facing. Please don't set up. her beautiful hair on fire. Does it? Does it get me? I considered it might. It pro. It yes, it would get the okay. saber. DC yeah. sixteen. It's a dex save. Uh, dex save, yeah. yes. The damaged one fails, and the other one gets a uh, is success with a nineteen. So ten. Why is it keep rolling twice? Eighteen damage or nine. Okay. If lost. The one grappling you, Elimus, is burned up. Does he let me go? It does. You are no longer grappled, or Andrus no longer restrained. What about the one that's got Maurice? Is that? Did that take damage? It took damage, yes, but it's What about still... this one? Did it hurt him? Good point. Um, it's a 15 foot cone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is also incinerated. Wizard getting some good mileage in today. Be gone. Hmm. All right. Anything else for you? That's it for me. Okay. <clears throat> On their turn. Moonbeam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finally. It's a deck save. Third level moonbeam. Cast uh, half an hour ago. Who knows? Yeah. I have sure. a seven. Deck save, con save, but okay. Uh, con. It's on the still have a seven. Line. Eight points of damage. And five. Uh, it's 3d10. That's to the bright, okay. isn't it? <clears throat> What's that? Yeah, That's to the big bright. big one, yeah. The, what did I saw it on, on roll 20. It was like Thorn Lord or something. I don't remember. Needle mm -hmm. Lord. It's a Needle Lord. Ne needle Lord. Whatever that is. The Lord of so, 13. Which will look about and let's see. What is Mr. Needle Lord doing here? He is going to look about and make a needle volley against every one in the room. Does Waldo 19 to hit? Muted. Yes, that's a hit. For two damage. Boink. Uh, Sauri, uh, wait, who's yeah? Sauri, uh, natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> two damage. Two damage. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> the the tiny needles. Yeah. 
and let's see and a let's see all right going down the line claire mm. got a four to hit things off the armor maris i'm honing in on that 15. this is a terrible attack all right one piercing damage And I will miss Elimus with under 10 and miss Claire with under 10. He will then reach out towards Elimus with his raking vine attack. What? And roll a natural one. I'll just watch it slowly as it passes over me. It's, yeah, it's something like that. Just while though at the start of your turn, you take 11 points of piercing damage um, from this grapple. Keeping in mind a certain wizard that I know who sometimes forgets abilities that he has, um, as a rogue, I have uncanny dodge. Might I have implemented that for that 11 points I took from the raking strike last round? Uh, not at the start of your turn because it's a it's a Passover no. effect on the grapple. No, I'm, the, I'm saying um, the, attack. the attack that he hit me with the last round that I didn't use Uncanny Dodge on. I was wondering if I could retroactively use Uncanny Dodge on that. Because you've been so kind to me in um, another world far, far away, yes. Thank Just you. Those Some of those reaction features are hard to remember. So yes. We'll give this one. All right. Cool. What a benevolent DM. Well, you know. We're both mm. benevolenting all over each other. Okay. That's a little odd. <laughs> it is. We're on, we're on but stream. You take, this is, at the, keep it together. At the start of your turn, you still take the additional Yeah, I did. 11, I got it. We're so, good. Yeah. We're good. Um, okay. Um, I will take this opportunity to finish. This druid did not attack. Did he mean for him to? Yes. Thanks. No problem. He will... Paid. Lift his, the one next to Deswaldo is still alive. Who will lift his, um, whisper some words and hit you with the stick, which seems to have, um, become enchanted. Shalala. Twenty-two to hit. Twenty-two is a hit. Oh, it's funny. Uh, for eight damage. Will you go and hit uh, Jezwaldo is not looking very good, but he will take this opportunity to hopefully finish off this druid. With a natural one. Oof. So that would be a no. Jezwaldo is done. Sarif. Uh, I will attack the guy next to me. Okay. Oh, hey. I'm sorry. They need to go, too. They didn't go. Oh, oh okay. Uh, do that real quick. Um, the one will just... Is still grappling Maris. He will try to... Constrict. With a six. Which will not do anything. Go on, Sarev. <laughs> That's right. Um, for flavor, it's a bite attack. But I would like to do the claws. Can I do that? <laughs> It's sure. so lame that the bite does less damage. Your teeth are too big to be practical is the oh, problem. Oh, that's the problem. Okay. Um, that, did that roll it? Yes, it did. 17 to hit for 16 yep. damage. 16 is exactly the amount you needed. Maris is no longer grappled. Uh, Rip to thanks. shreds. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would like to bound back over here just to onto the stairs kind of i guess yep. um yep. there we go i'm just i'm kind of like awkwardly making my way all right that's it go all right claire you're up um i'll start by noting just cuz i had forgotten this that uh when the uh druid that was here died i gained 5 points from my Hexblade ability. Um, I will come up here behind Jeswaldo, and I will utilize some Leon hands here. Um, you can have. Hooray! Oh, you. I will can not have... survive another hit from the from the uh, grappling uh, vine. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, 
You can have a whopping 15 points. Yes. Merci. Which is not, I'm again, I'm French. What's the problem? <laughs> what is wrong with You're me? You're not dying today, my friend. And that'll be my turn. Maris, you're up. Okay. Uh, Maris really wants... Oh, no, she can't. She shouldn't do that. So instead, <laughs> I was going to say Maris wants to set more stuff on fire, but then she thought, it's like, we're in a house. There's all this wood everywhere. Maybe not. So Maris will, now that Jeswaldo has been taken care of... You can do Scorching Ray. You hear Elimus mentioned in your back of your head. <laughs> oh! <laughs> do it. Unleash your power. <laughs> um, do it. Well, I really want to do it now. Yeah. Power. Scorching Ray is fun. Do it. I'm do Unlimited it. power. <laughs> Into reek. Uh, 15 muted, is exactly what you needed for the for that. So, nine damage. All right. You get. Does it feel look like it's two more rays, right? doing a lot more two damage? Two more rays. Yeah. Does it look Three like more... it's doing a lot more damage, DM, than normal? You know, it doesn't actually. You would think, but oh. um, it's covered in wine at the moment. And uh, go ahead and you're still blessed. So go ahead and roll that blessed to see if you can bump up that eleven. Okay. A ten. A Twenty-two will definitely hit. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Yes. Maris. I have one more. This. Okay. Damn, well, girl. Damn. Oh! damn. You actually needed that four on the bless because that last one wouldn't have killed it. But bumping that 11 up to the 15 <laughs> gives you the final blow against the needle yes. lord. Yes. How do you demolish this creature? So Maris is no longer grappled, but still restrained. And she like feels all of this rage boiling up inside of her Do and it. then when <laughs> yeah, she hears a live spider and she's like ah, and just like starts up flinging fireballs baby <laughs> and that is whoosh <laughs> excellent unleash the light onto him and yes it exactly. will burn up and crumple to the ground then she high fives alive <laughs> <laughs> I am no longer grappled. Right? Correct. Because okay. that would really suck. Is there still this one druid left? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's my go. I, I cleared the turn order because I forgot about it because you guys are definitely <laughs> oh, going to. Uh... Well, sure. maybe, we, maybe we should leave this one alive. No, yeah. kill him. No? Oh, I'm whoops, interrogate whoops, him? Whoops, I was thinking uh... we could interrogate him. I'll interrogate him with this. <laughs> oh, sorry, I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> nope. We can hand wave that because you guys yeah. will certainly be able to. Uh, uh, I'll just take off. a decisive poke from a weapon. I would mm -hmm. immediately like to turn back into a lizard and very foolishly grab that staff. Okay. It is black, gnarled wood. You know, maybe we should. Never mind. You feel a latent, un, uh, untamed power within it. No. So, sorry. Any you, idea what that is, sorry? Are you sure you don't want me to look at it first? I mean, you can you cast your spell from here, and I just hold it out. No, I need to touch it. I mean, there's curses all over this place. Remember what happened the last time. You feel okay, sorry, touching time. it? Okay. Just let him identify it, so you at least know what it does. I want it back. You can absolutely have it back. And if we don't give it back, you can always turn into a giant cat and kill us all. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Alignment should be easy pickings for you. Very easy. It would be the last thing we would expect. <laughs> well, not me, but the last thing they would expect. I, I, I hand over the staff. Okay, invisible. <laughs> 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 Oh, you're lucky. I I'll say it, perception prepared. check. I haven't got that prepared, so you're lucky. I missed you step away. I haven't got that prepared. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll spend some time identifying it. Okay. Go over to Maris. You, you doing okay there? 
You guys will yeah. have some yeah. <laughs> some time here. It sounds quiet for the time being. <sighs> the Limus will be able to identify this as a Gothias staff. Ooh. What, what's one of them on their own? What? What's one of them? What did you say? Gothias. A Gothias. Gothias. I, I think it's a Gothias. It looks Gothias to me, but Gothias is the way. Yeah. I know that IRL. There you go. Claire has no fucking clue. <laughs> no idea. See, I can't display it as a. Um, um, but I will, I will make this tree visible to you in one moment. Mm -hmm. Something like this in my campaign several levels ago. <clears throat> Could it be found in equipment? Can it, oh, okay. oh. There you go. So, I suppose, Sari, if you would be very made a bit wary of this in your beast form. Yeah. But, uh... That's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Damn. Well, you could, if you would like to have that and whack people with it, I don't see a problem with that. I would very much like to do this. <laughs> Just don't whack any of us, but other people. It That's suits fine. you. It suits yeah. you, sir. What would what happen if, when you turn into an animal? Doesn't all of it his gear away. kind of shift with him? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> Does that seem right to you? No, but that's what seems to happen, and I'm not going to question it. So I, I, I'm more worried about the, the druid going mad. <laughs> what does that do? Ah, probably fine. <laughs> mad. Did we have time to maybe utilize a hit die or two here? Uh, I don't think that would be rest. smart. Oh, we we did a sh uh, we did a short rest. So you, yeah, uh, we uh, we did one yeah. before we got we came in here. So you would have had one. Oh. Aww. Before coming here, the ravens were keeping you safe. Let's see, I don't know what madness does, but I do. I'll just roll a single to... die retroactively for that, if that's okay. <clears throat> it's just short-term madness. Nice. Great. That's fine. Are you sure you don't want to do another one? Nah, it's fine. You get you get plus your con mod, at least. Do I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, then I'm totally fine. Nice. I'm actually up to full. What do you think? You think that was all of them, or um, are there more? In like, <laughs> is there one in this room? And I open so, the door. So, um, actually, I, I have a question. So, what what specifically did uh, Debbie and Martikov tell us about this building? Since I was not here for that conversation. It like no takers. Like, Debbie. oh my god, Hello. I got. I need to know. <laughs> Um, well, I want to know like what we're doing here. If if there's anything more specific than just clear shit out. No, that was it. It was clear the, shit okay. out. The the wine that is for uh, Kresk is actually in this dock I right see. here, ready to go. Um, and they just couldn't get to it because of all what was going on in here. So. Gotcha. All right. Well, we should just search around and see if there are any more of these bastards. Mm -hmm. There's a wall opens this door. Um, yes. So you will see you are in the upper area here of the loading dock. Oops, that's hide reveal. And there's a trebuchet. stairway leading down. That's to what you imagine must be like right there. Right, I see. Right. Trebuchet. Um, we're right. getting a bit on the late side too. It's about mm -hmm. time, it's time to, to wrap say things night. up for tonight. Um, but uh, whether or not there's anything else here and the true purpose behind all of this, we'll have to wait. Oh, okay. There's, there's until more than the next session. Maybe. Well, there's a whole upstairs area here. Which you'll be able to see. Ooh. There's another. There's another hallway here that you guys. This door is already open, so you can see. There's all of this. Oh yeah. Super mm -hmm. cool. More doors. More investigation checks. <laughs> One does more not blights. simply walk Maybe. into more doors. Uh, <laughs> I do not fear blights. <laughs> All right, they, friends. They like me. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, I know we have another game come up on Monday. 
descent into Avernus. Come check out. Uh, Hopefully, game my Sean's internet running. stays on this time. First time. Yeah, we yeah. Nice yeah that was real. We only had a half a game, so we get have a game and a half on Monday. Is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> that 10 minutes at the start that we <laughs> six hours of a game <laughs> i think Oof. that would be oh pretty God. rough i'm just going to answer obviously um, i'm not 14 anymore <laughs> someone in chat uh gnomes this uh what we're using here is roll 20 and all the options are in there like you can roll with digital dice and stuff like that so that's by uh roll 20.net i believe no space r-o-l-l yeah roll 20 net. so <laughs> But yeah, um, thank you very much, guys, for all the follows, etc. Um, again, we have we think we've definitely got air off on Sunday, unless some, some emergency happens and it's not on. But apparently, it's definitely on. Um, that is an early one. That is... Uh, what time is that? That's... I think it's 4 p.m. UK time. So, what's that? 11? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 11 Eastern. And then Monday, yeah, we're back with uh, Trapped at Home, where we're going to be doing 6.30, I believe. That's right, yes. We've been trying... Uh, no, not 6.30, 5.30. 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we, we've been publishing a 5 o'clock go, but we can never seem to get it to go before 5.30. So we're going to just make 5.30 the time. Yeah. Should work out for everybody. Yeah. So and then it's going to go to 6. 6. That's right. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But again, thank you very much, guys. Um, apologies for the right at the beginning. Um, I don't know what that sound issue was, but managed to fix it and got through it. And uh, yeah, and hopefully uh, next Friday we'll be back with a full team. So, yes. Yeah, cool. All right, guys. Good night, friends. Have a good Bye. weekend. Have a good weekend. See you later. <laughs>